right. How are you, buddy? Horrible. Why? I died today in Path of Exile. Some dumb shit. Oh, why? What killed you? Just the uh, exploding corpses. Yep. <laughs> Everyone has to die to one of those ones. Well, I mean, that's every death in PoE, right? Um, it's uh, it's usually a couple of things. Y y if you so had a they're walking into an, a room and getting one shot by a fuck ton of ranged people, it's getting whacked by a boss because you weren't paying attention, or it's exploding corpses. Opening a frozen chest is a big meme. A lot of people died of that. Oh, really? A freeze chest? Yeah, absolutely. That's how I lost I, my I always first hardcore uh, I think I had anti-freeze stuff on my either my boots or a flask, so that stuff never killed me. Well, it works until it doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Yeah. And then, and like, I lost my first witch to like at level 35 or something, like before I knew anything about the game. I lost her mm -hmm. to the like a freeze box in uh, the courts in uh, Acts. When's when's the ramp? When does it ramp up? I haven't played two weeks, so I'm forgetting. Like, I don't know. The, Maps, the difficulty really ramps up game? when um, no. that hungry god guy gets freaking crazy and then uh, everybody dies. In well, I mean, in act, in act six, I mean, all your resistance is getting nerfed a little. So yeah, that. yeah. After yeah. Katava, mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Wait, so you only have one character? <sighs> yeah, I only have that. That's my only hardcore character. So I don't know. I might. I think I'm just gonna wait till next season. I'm gonna play um, SSF, the solo cell phone. You're not gonna go um, party next season? We, are there are there parties next season? Like you're like well, if you're an SSF, there's not. Oh, then no, probably just SSF. Why? I don't know. The training stuff seems really cancerous to me. <laughs> really? Yeah. And the SSF ladder seems like more fun. So. It is a little bit, yeah. Um, the I, I think SSF might be something I try too because uh, it, it does seem like after a little while, like you get so geared up that like the game becomes mostly trivial except for a couple of like weird deaths. Yeah, and then farming for drops is probably a lot more exciting in SSF as well if you get like that good drop. Yeah, the tough part though is you got to solo bosses, man. Yeah. Soul um, Act 10 oh, well, Katava. Good luck. I don't know. I think if you play it safe, I don't think it's that bad. Did you get run through Act 10 Katava, or did you do most of your bosses yourself? Um, I mean, I played with a friend, but we were pretty similarly geared. But I did everything. Um, I kind of, like, I took my time going through the acts, so I wasn't, like, power leveling, like, hardcore. So, like, so, or, or I'm sorry, so I was kind of overleveled for most of the content. Yeah. So, yeah. So were you ahead of were you like ahead of the bosses when you got yeah, to them? Yeah, generally. Yeah, generally mm -hmm. I was, like, a couple levels ahead of, yeah, or a few levels. That's how you got to do it, man. Yeah, that's uh, like if uh, what I'd always do is I would level um, like maybe like five or six levels up before I went yeah. to like the next act. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of trying to do it. Like just full clearing maps and shit. Like being pretty slow makes everything pretty easy. You were you were with Mooten the whole time, right? Um, not the whole time, but for quite a, for some of it, I don't remember, I don't know what percentage, but yeah. Well, I'm sorry you died, buddy. You died at what? Eighty nine? No, it's ninety. Ninety. Dude, you got like you got a, a level ninety character, first uh, first hardcore character. That's like super impressive. You didn't die before that, right? Um, I died once in my softcore character to a labyrinth. But... Whatever, that doesn't <laughs> but, count. That's whatever. Yeah, like level twelve. But yeah, no, I mean, it just kind of sucks. Yeah, it always feels bad, man. That's that's what I love about permadeath games, though. Yeah. When you lose something that actually like actually matters, it's when gaming gets good. Yep. I just wish they wouldn't balance around that logout macro so the dying part could be more exciting. It's but... so busted, dude. Yeah. I love it. I was the... actually super disappointed. It actually like killed a lot of my excitement for the game when I found out that was like standard that logout macro shit. Yep. It's like it destroys the integrity of the game so much. But Yeah, because you can use it for you can use use it for literally anything and uh it'll sometimes it doesn't protect you. I've actually had characters die even though they got mm -hmm. through the logout because there's like a two second delay sometimes between when the server and the logout happens, but it's it's like not reasonable that that's allowed in the game. Yeah. And then the whole game is balanced around it, so you never have like any like yeah. exciting like slow deaths. It's usually just like a one shot thing because if you if it's anything slower, people just auto log out. So Yeah, it's like why would you why would you balance a game around like a third party application? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I understand there are some problems with it not doing it, but yeah, I don't know, it's pretty disappointing. It is. Yeah. So you think you're done for this league and you're just going to do uh you're gonna you're gonna wait yeah, till. Yeah, it feels really weird to make like a character like one month in. You know, I don't know. I'll probably just wait till the start of next month. I'll do that SSF shit. Usually, what I do is I'll run a lab jug, and that'll be my first character. And I'll do like I'll do la Uber Lab just like over and over again. And then I'll probably level up like a second character. And when mm -hmm. the and then usually that second character will die eventually. I'll run like a third, and then I'll be done with the league usually at that point. Oh sure. Yeah, I'm probably gonna do a Sunder jug again just because it was super safe, and then I can just be a little bit more fine tuned on my build and everything. Did you do Sunder all the way to ninety? 
Hell yeah, I did. That's so wish. painful. Oh my god, how, how did you boy. deal with your DPS? What the? F <laughs> no, it's pretty good. What is um? What, no. Uh, what are the alternatives? Anything. I mean, I'm still like one shotting mobs up to like red maps and shit. I mean, you were one shotting mobs on red maps in level ninety. Yeah. Did they increase the damage of Sunder? Maybe they did. I don't know. I mean, my DPS at the end was, um, I think we were up to almost 200,000. That's pretty good. Huh. Sunder should, what, um, you could, like, even like Earthquake or something like that would be better. But Sunder should have been, like, the way Sunder usually works is, like, it's amazing for leveling. And then it starts to drop off around, like, 75. Hmm. It hmm. might be, um... Maybe they buffed it or something. I don't know. Since this is my first leg, I'm not sure. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know how else you'd go Jug. I, for Jug, I always went Whirling Blades for Uberlab. And mm -hmm. I would just do like 10-minute Uberlab runs, get a ton of currency. But uh, I haven't played since... Let me think. Last league was Bestiary. I didn't play Bestiary. And then I played the league before that. which I, Or uh, which was Abyss, which I think Abyss was like probably one of the best leagues. But I heard Incursion was even better. Hmm. So it's back to League of Legends for you, is it? Yeah, and then I'll probably play their games. Fuck, I need another game I can dump my time into, though. Realm Royale, but FPS, though. Ugh. <laughs> I know. I was listening to your podcast and I when you were talking about how FPS skills don't transfer over. Mm -hmm. That's so frustrating to me, too, because I, I was also one of those people that didn't actually train FPS as my main games. I played like mm -hmm. MOBA slash like MMOs and stuff. So all my skills are totally useless in gaming now. Yeah, that's pretty sad. It is, man. It is. It's real tough. Fuck, I need to install CSGO again. Do you Why? ever play that game? The game no. was so much fun. Is it? Why is it fun? I don't know. Okay. I was bad at it too, but. I guess it helps your aim. Oh, I, no, no, not even like for training. It's just for some reason CSGO is always just really fun. I don't know why. Huh, I've never like really given it a chance. I have like 15 minutes played on that game. It's in my library somewhere. I think we were like, I had to set it up to do something for my team when uh -huh. I was on CLG. But other than that, I never actually played it. Have you been playing more of the Realm Royale or? I've been playing a lot of Realm and a lot of variety games. Um, so like I'm kind of waiting for a couple of games to come out in July. There's a really good 4X for Warhammer coming out. And then Camelot Unchained. what does that mean? 4X is like a, have you ever played like Stellaris or you would love these games, but your stream would be super Resident Sleeper, like, like even more Resident Sleeper than League. Um, even but, more than Path of Exile? Yeah, way more. <laughs> okay. So if you played like Stellaris, dude, you would love Stellaris, but you would just not, like everybody would hate you for it. But basically what they are is they're like these, um, you've never heard of like, uh, uh, like, um, let's see, like Hearts of Iron or like Europa, like uh, Univer Univer Versalis or whatever that game is, like any of those? Um, I don't think so. Is Factorio a 4X, technically? Um, um, I don't know. So what a 4X is, is it's like a grand, it's like a huge strategy game where like you have just like tons of stuff going on and um, you have like all this, like, like a whole civilization to manage, but it's not like civilization. How do I describe a grand strategy? Um, in still, in Stellaris. So civilization is like the sort of like staple for grand strategy, but Stellaris like takes it to another level where like you're in space and like, you're almost managing like the entire empire of Eve instead of just one ship interesting okay and you're like you have like all these different planets and stuff like that you would really like stellaris you should try it it's a pretty it's one of the older games but um let's see battleship gothic is that the name or gothic something gothic battlefleet or something that game just came out that's a forex too but now i'm waiting for camelot unchained which is the dark age of camelot successor that's on uh the fourth is the beta for that and then Probably playing Realm, and then I'm playing like um, a forex called Relics of War on July twelfth. Just attack him, dude! You win the fight. <laughs> Don't be fucking retarded. Oh! He can do it, buddy. Never mind. No, he can't. He's, he's, fuck! There's so many creeps there. That was rough. I can't. I would die. Really? I don't know. I feel like you. Kill him. All right. Um. Yeah. Cool.
So what's up? Hi. When is your like? What's your sleep schedule looking right now? It's good. I go to bed around like one or two. I I need a lot less sleep because of this intermittent fasting meme. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, this it's pretty much like totally changed my life. I'm curious about what your what is your intermittent fasting schedule? Um, I basically drink a silent at around 2 p.m. right now, and then I'll usually eat up until like right about now, about 10. Or, like that'll be like my final. Like I'll stop eating at around like 9:30 or 10. You'll stop. Okay, you're you're doing something really different. You'll stop eating at 9:30 or 10, and then you'll eat yeah. again at 2 o'clock. Yeah. So I basically have like a eight hour eating window, and then a 14 hour fasting window. I think no, 16 hour fasting window. Okay. Huh. That's so, not too different. I think most are recommended like 10 or less, right? Yeah. So I was on an eight hour for like the longest time. I was doing 12 to 8 p.m. So are you having one meal a day or two? Technically, you're having um, one, right? I have around like, it's like one big one and one kind of whatever. Okay. So like what I was, I guess the reason why it changed so much for me was like I was having one meal every, or sorry, two meals a day. I'd have mm -hmm. one at like 12 or 1 p.m. and another at like 8 or 9 p.m. when I got off my broadcast. And I would... But for some reason, like I was just like slower after those meals. I wasn't like as sharp. And what I, what I changed it to was I did now I'm only doing like a, maybe like a, it's probably like three hours, but maybe it's like realistically like four hours. So I'll start eating at around eight or 9 PM and I'll usually stop at like 11. And so I go from the time that I wake up all the way to like a three hour period and it and it's like completely different i feel totally different but the you craziest you can get all of your calories in a three hour window it seems like a lot of eating i eat a lot yeah uh i'll usually have like Do you have like one massive fucking meal or two big meals yeah i just eat sometimes i make two dinners worth of food like i could easily kill like a pound and a half of meat a giant salad and like a sweet potato and then just make a pizza <laughs> huh. and it's amazing but it works i think the thing that works for me is i was on um when i was when i was like having lunch at like 12 or 1 for whatever reason like i'd feel too slow and like i wouldn't want to get started with my day so like i would end up like not streaming or not doing like what i wanted to do and mm -hmm. just not having to worry about that at all is like super awesome um yeah that's one of the nice things that i've noticed personally and then it's just another thing i've heard is that you don't feel like you're you you don't necessarily feel like you're as enslaved to food like it's yeah. okay to wait a while to eat you don't feel like you have to constantly be tied to like okay it's like four hours later i need to eat another meal or whatever I, i've noticed that and that's kind of nice it's really nice particularly when you're traveling that was something i noticed yeah, sure. a lot was like um when i was going on so many plane flights for clg like not having to eat or being bound to like airport food or whatever it's like whatever i can go get dinner tonight or something is like really good but i actually didn't need to do if to do that um it was i started fasting like three days out of the month and i i got that result gotcha but it's been a pretty huge change for me to go from the eight hours to the four hours which is why i wanted to talk to you sure uh yeah i'm not sure how i would feel doing that i might be able to do it but i just don't know if i have the desire to that's so much eating in a four-hour window i don't know if i'm comfortable with it well, it's less for you because your body weight's lower, so you wouldn't have to eat like a crazy amount. Like I'm trying to eat up to 175, right? So sure. I think you can do it. And then the other thing too I'm just is worried about. I don't want to do like any like too crazy dieting because I don't want to like fuck my body over some shit either. If you go like on too hard of a caloric restriction, I know that some bad things can happen. Really? Like yeah, what? Yeah, I think so. Like, like metabolic things. Like I don't, I don't want that shit to get like fucked or whatever. Like long term metabolic adaptations to like extreme stress dieting or whatever. Things that kind of worry me. I don't think I'm there with the intermittent fasting, but like if you're cutting more than like 800 calories a day or some shit, I think that can do weird things to you. Huh? Like slow down your metabolism and stuff. Yeah, and like keep it like permanently depressed and shit. Permanently. Yeah. So we were reading some really weird, um, some really weird, a really insane study the other day. Um, there might be more literature on this, maybe, and maybe it's not necessarily um like fact but like so the you remember the biggest loser you remember that show yeah so those people after six years um i think their average they weighed like 150 kilos and they were doing 2600 calories a day as their bmr their basal metabolic rate their resting metabolic rate okay um 
they lost a whole bunch of weight and their average weight after was like it was like 80 or 90 kilograms or something and their bmr went from um, like 2600 to like 19 1990 or something but then most of them regained their weight up to what they were before but their met metabolism didn't increase their metabolism was still in the 1900s for their bmr whoa yeah that shit that was an amazing study to read i couldn't believe that shit i don't know if that was in response to like an extreme diet or um or what but yeah i need to like read more shit about that that's like really scary it doesn't make a lot of sense evolutionarily it does it kind of does if you're like on an extreme fucking like malnutrition spree maybe your body has this adaptation to hold on to calories more so that you're not like literally dying oh okay so like okay so like if you're actually starving yourself but yeah 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 those are so like, on those type of shows you're at like 350 to 400 pounds and you're dropping yeah they're hundreds massive of pounds deficits. of weight right yeah, yeah. massive deficits mm -hmm. it's not just the 500 calories one pound a week thing it's like that seems pretty unnatural yeah like yeah it might be yeah a caloric restriction from intermittent well first of all you don't necessarily get caloric restriction from intermittent fasting i think it sort of happens automatically because yep. you yeah because you're, you're just snacking all the time yeah that's what's that's what's doing it for me like it's like yep. i'll normally have like some pita chips or something like that but then like especially since i have such a short window i need to focus the good foods that i have like in that time frame so i don't have yeah, time to here. eat a bunch of ice cream and shit because i gotta eat all that and other I'm stuff yeah, and I'm not tempted to like wake up early and get like a hot chocolate or like yeah. late at night. I'm not tempted to um like kind of go and just like snack on something before sleeping or whatever because I know I'll fuck my shit up. So have you noticed uh, energetically or like what's what are the sort of benefits that have happened to you as far as like your sort of daily? I guess feeling? I feel like right now I feel like waking up is really easy. Like once I'm out of bed, I don't feel sluggish at all. Um, that I guess that's when I feel sharpest is before I have my my first meal. I feel a lot more awake than I used to. Um, but I've only been doing it for like a week or two now, so I don't know how much of that might be placebo or not, but, but I, I mean, I mean like that started happening without me even thinking about it too, which is something I noticed afterwards. Like I wasn't like, I didn't read that like intermittent fasting makes you feel sharper or some shit. Like mm -hmm. I just noticed it after waking up that I was like, yeah, feeling a lot better. That was the first thing that I noticed about it too. When I switched over to the four hour thing was that basically like until up to the point where I eat, there's probably... It's hard to gauge like what the percentage is, but it's a significant increase in cognition and decision making and just like the way that I sort of like coordinate myself in every way. And the other thing too is like I I tend to do one of the differences between us is like I tend to do a lot of like really heavy exercise, right? Like almost every yeah. day. And mm -hmm. I haven't noticed like I thought that I would get really hungry or that I would start to um catabolize muscle because I was exercising really hard that I still wouldn't eat for like another eight hours, but it's been no problem at all. Yeah. Cause once the, the, um, the ghrelin gets like, once that hormone that tells you that you have to eat goes away, like you're just fine. Yeah. Gre ghrelin. It's, or it's like I think it's ghrelin. something like that. Yeah. There's that. And then there's one more, I think. Um, yeah. That are responsible for hunger shit. Yeah. That, that's, so those are some of the biggest changes I've seen. And like, that's the, the, the whole thing, like about just, the reason I think that you could do a four hour one is because basically you could just, the way you would do this is you would wake up, you would like take care of whatever you need to take care of, start streaming and just don't eat until you stop streaming. Yeah, maybe. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And it like works pretty well. Like if like my broadcast is usually over around like 9 PM or so. And like, I'll just like toss like a sweet potato in, start cooking, eat by 10 or something. Good to go. So it seems like really easy for your lifestyle, right? Because like you could, you basically just like eat. Yeah, it's possible. I When I was listening to it, I heard that there weren't many benefits though, like lower than like nine or 10 hours, I think. Mm -hmm. but I, maybe it's same reverse, but that's what I was like hearing. So I figured why make it harder than it has to be. Yeah. <laughs> There's another dude named uh, Ori Hoffmeckler who has a thing called the warrior diet. And his idea is similar where you just sort of eat really clean, like one meal a day. And then you don't eat outside of that. And so there's some kind of like interesting stuff around that too. Mm -hmm. But if you've noticed like an increase in energy, then, and like, just like general sharpness without it being prompted, that's like really interesting to me. Are you eating clean or are you just eating whatever you want? Um, cleaner. Um, Aaron is like cooking all my meals now, so I haven't eaten out in like weeks. So I, it's not like specifically focused on like healthy food, but it's like all stuff that's being cooked here and everything. So that's really good. So that's helped you with your with your time management as well. Maybe, yeah. That's actually something that's kind of bad. Is that um, 
I changed two big things in terms of my food, the intermittent fasting and then having Aaron cook. So I'm not actually sure which one is having oh, the impact. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that was probably pretty dumb on my part, but. Yeah. So you didn't have time to actually like test out what was working better. Yeah. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I moved those things forward in intervals. So like I started eating healthy and then I did intermittent fasting later. And I noticed a benefit from both though. Sure. Yeah, like a pretty like huge benefit. I think um, once you get your food, like food can take so much time if you don't have it handled. I, I cook all my food, but that's why like it was such a significant difference to go from one meal to like two. Yeah. Yeah, or sorry, two to one, I mean. Cause it was oh, literally sure. like, it takes me like an hour to make one meal. Right. So like, I'm, I'm really like saving like an hour and a half, maybe two hours a day. Mm -hmm. Pretty crazy. Huh? Yeah. I think those are all my thoughts on it. Sure. Other than that, we need to get you into realm Royale, dude. I'm telling you. Dude, what do you say? We need to get you into realm Royale. Oh yeah. Someday. <laughs> that means no. Oh, we have to have our uh, our shroom talk. Hell yeah. What about it, buddy? You have to be totally focused for that talk, okay? I'm totally focused, dude. I don't know if I believe you. What do you... Test me. Test my focus. Test okay? your focus. Huh. Okay, let's do it. I think... I think it's actually not much to talk about, actually. But, um... There's only one thing I know we're going to disagree with. On whether or not the experience was spiritual. Yep. Or... Yeah. It, it's, it's you, you still think that you had a like completely. Physical reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Brain, like a, a complete reaction in your brain. And that's that you're like holding to that, right? Yeah. Pretty hard. Yeah. So you have no, um, Oh, also, like, since now it's been, like, a couple of weeks, has there been anything that's changed for you at all as a result of that experience? No. For the first few days when I came home, I was having really weird dreams. Like, I would wake up and not sure if it was reality or not, but that went away after, like, two or three days. I was getting worried for a sec that that was going to be, like, a new permanent thing in my life. But, <laughs> but after, like, two or three days, that stopped. So. so you've had, like, no increase in gratitude or no, like, sort of change in your perspective? You're literally exactly the same, dude? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you're a bizarre person. Thanks, I try to be. <laughs> I don't think you need to try to be. You're so weird. That's like, uh, like, um, for you to not be moved by an experience like that heavy is so weird to me. But okay, I want to. I'm gonna drop the, my my big meme on you. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. You're God. Don't say anything crazy. Too crazy. Wait, why not? Are you God? No, no. Okay. I don't think so. Like that. Are okay. you? No. Okay. I I can't be sure. I might be. You might be oh, too. God. We might all be. All okay. right. <laughs> okay. So I think. How do you explain? Every everything you everything you've said about the um sort of like biological, like non spiritual stuff makes sense to me up to a point, and where I lose it, is in uh what I would call shared experience and hallucinogens. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so how is it that multiple people can experience the same phenomenon on something like DMT or psilocybin and they can come to the same conclusion without any interaction with each other? So, for example, on DMT, like a really classic case is like um, mechanical elves, these little like weird robot elves and people from pretty much like you could pretty much never have known about that. Right. And you'll, you'll have that experience similar to how like an intermittent fasting, you could have that experience of being sharper, even if you had no, you hadn't read it on it or anything. So the I thing mean, that I can invent like a million hypotheses to explain these, but we wouldn't really know without testing it. Right. How would you test it? Because it's, it's subjective to, it, it's not every single person on DMT that experiences the mechanical elves in the, in, and, and you had like an interesting thing too, like where on, um, on mushrooms, it was a really big thing for you to be able to check the your your phone for the time right mm -hmm. but when i most of the time i was on psilocybin and other hallucinogens i couldn't actually look at the time like okay. the, the the numbers wouldn't make sense to me 
Sure. Um, so what I'd be interested in hearing is like how you justify shared shared experience of consciousness on hallucinogens. I mean, so as far as I know, what psilocybin does is it, it works as like a replicator for the neurotransmitter um, serotonin. So it like increases like a whole bunch of communication pathways in your brain and opens yourself up to a whole bunch of like senses that normally aren't normally experienced. Um, or, or rather, I guess you could say they're like intensified. That's where like supposedly that's where the looping comes from. Um, that as, as you like um, as neurons fire, they become associated with each other in ways they haven't before, et cetera, et cetera, all this stuff that like it's entirely possible that um we kind of have these like shared experiences because that's just the way that you know as we modify our brains in certain ways they tend to process things a certain way so a lot of people taking mushrooms will have these similar experiences as a result of that i guess does that make sense sort of when you say it opens up your senses to things not normally experienced what does that mean so um Holy shit, this guy is fucking horrible. Um, so the way that I read it was that um, the way that I read it was that um, like, fuck, how, how do I explain this? Like, you're, I can't explain it. I don't think I have the necessary background to explain it. Um, all of your neurons are like connected to each other, right? Or, or like not, yeah, not all theory, of them are, yeah. but like a lot of them are connected to each other in mm -hmm. ways that like they, certain ones of them light up or whatever or are, you know signal other ones and that's how memories and shit are formed. Mm -hmm. that like when you're on um, psilocybin, a whole bunch more of these neural pathways are formed very easily and then fire repeatedly over and over and over again. And that that experience is like unique to like ingesting these like serotonin um, emulating psilocybin chemicals or whatever, right? Okay. So that that so when I say new experiences, what I mean is that like a whole bunch of neurons are firing together that don't normally fire together, um, and, and there's no real way to get them to do that without ingesting some sort of chemical in your body. You can't get that experience like naturally. You just, your brain just doesn't work that way unless you've got some kind of uh, hallucinogenic or would it be psychedelic um, modifying your mind in that way. Does that make sense when I say? It makes sense, but then how would that be any different from your current reality now? Well, I mean, you're experiencing reality differently, right? Your reality is your subjective experience of your reality at any point in time. So when you modify your brain chemistry like that, you're experiencing things in a way that you haven't before. So that's like your reality is changing like that. Yeah, but how can you be sure what part, just because your reality is consistent outside of a psychedelic experience, mm -hmm. how can you be sure that the psychedelic experience is not real reality in the same sense oh, of the reality? In, a, in how can you be sure? You yeah. can never be sure. It's impossible. You, you, we trust our senses because it's literally all we have. But I mean, there's no, there's um, no way to like actually have like that 100% like assuredness, right? But you're still convinced that there's a there's a hard stop between the reality that you experience, say like right now with me, and the reality that you were in on psychedelics. But when you were on psychedelics, you didn't think so. Of course not, but yeah, but now I now I mean like a certain I there, you just have to like um I guess you would call it like inductive reasoning like there are just a, enough certainties that I can point to to feel reasonably comfortable that this experience is authentic. Um, there are a lot of external things I can point to, and there are a lot of other people that have subjective experiences that I can um point to that that seem to match with mine. So I could be reasonably certain that this reality is real, and the and the psychedelic one wasn't. But all those apply to psychedelics too. Like you can still have a lot of people that have correspond. Again, they've collaborated experiences that are uh, that, that for psychedelics with you. They can confirm. Like you and I can talk back. Like the looping thing was something that yeah, I've they experienced. Can, they I know can exactly that they what had that experience while on a psychedelic, but but not that that's their normal experience. Yeah, but again, normal experience is just based on consistency. Like it, it, it just so happens that you wake up today with like a similar sort of table of reality as you had yesterday but it's not necessarily the case that you do that tomorrow right i mean it's possible but it hasn't happened yet <laughs> yeah yeah but what so the reason i'm outlining it this way right is uh, as i'm okay. trying to illustrate that it isn't it isn't it possible that um your experience of reality presently is as subjective as it was on psychedelics I mean, like, yeah, that's possible. I, I can't prove to you that I am like a, this is like the, an impossible to solve problem as a human. I can't do this. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so how, so in the same way, how can you, I agree. So in the same way, how can you tell me that what you had was a purely biochemical experience 
and not a spiritual or subjective experience, subjective spiritual experience of reality. How can you tell me that for sure? When I, you, when I can't you... tell you any of that for sure. I have to speak in degrees of probability. So you just I believe can never it. tell you 100. No, 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 no. Degrees of probability, not blind faith, right? There is a million different things that I can test externally to make sure that my experience right now is real as opposed to when I was on psychedelics. I can't verify using other people or any scientific measurement that, for instance, I lived eternities in a room or that I was actually dead for periods of time. I can't verify that outside of anything but my own mind. But now that I am of what I would consider a sound mind, now I can be reasonably certain that I can verify with other people that my experience is, is somewhat consistent with what the rest of the universe is, is experiencing. There's no, um, now, there, yeah, I could no be doubt. making it all up in my mind. I can't, I can't prove that I'm not doing that. There's no way that I can do that. But, but I, I mean, like it's, I can only speak in degrees of certainty. It's entirely possible that I'm in a room somewhere and I'm fucking crazy and this is all like going on in my imagination. I can never be 100% certain of that. I can yeah. only speak in degrees of probability. Yeah. Yeah, so I get that part. So what I'm saying is, um, how do you make the jump from saying I've had no, nothing that I experienced, everything that I experienced was purely biochemical, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've had no, uh, I, I've had no like trip to spiritual consciousness. Like those eternities are, and those like periods of being dead and those loops are all things that are possible to be produced by biochemical reaction as a result of psychedelics how do you make you can't you're when you're telling me on the other hand you really cannot be sure of that wait can i be sure of of what that what i experienced wasn't like me what? escaping to reality and now i'm back in fantasy land or no no no, not that dramatic like what what you experienced was uh -huh. not a um let's take like a higher plane of existence for example or a different plane of existence or, or a reality that is as real as this one, but you're just in, these are all just like, I'm not sure. making so these how claims. Can I, I'm just saying. How can, I, how can I test that? You can't. That's the whole experience of psychedelics and why care. I wanted I'm you not, to have I'm them. Not, then I'm not interested in it. If you, it's an unfalsifiable theory. Yes, you are interested. Theory, you did no, it. Not, you I'm experienced not. it yourself. Yes, but I have a, but I have, I can explain it using inductive reasoning in terms of why it was there. I've got biological mechanisms that can point to why. No, we just discussed why you can't explain it that way. You, you told me, you told me yourself you can't explain it. You have no, no, no idea. No, no, I said, no, no, no. I said I can't say it for 100% certain, but I can give like a reasonably certain answer very easily. And I've got biological mechanisms that can explain why I felt the things that I did. Did. I would never jump to anything spiritual or supernatural because I don't need anything spiritual or supernatural to explain what I felt, I think. Does that make sense? Yeah, a little bit. You're saying that there's that you're saying that contained within this sort of biochemical theory is or hypothesis is all the answers you need. To, yeah, to but I don't see, yeah, I, I think it explains experience. most everything and I don't think I need any kind of supernatural or, like what is it that I need a supernatural power to explain or a super um, so that was when I like presented the idea of like shared consciousness or like when I presented the idea of like, sure. um, so for the shared consciousness, like we can use supernatural to explain that, but like there have been a trillion ideas in the past that have been proposed with supernatural explanations. And in every single time we've investigated those things, it's been not supernatural. Every single investigation in all of human history, um, where does the sun come from? Where's the moon come from? What, how do humans get sick? All of these were given supernatural explanations. And then as we did more investigation, more rigorous investigation, it was not supernatural. So now when I have a psychedelic experience, I already have a medical biological foundation, a mechanism to explain by which I experience very crazy things. The fact that psilocybin emulates serotonin in the brain, um, the, the fact that having a fuck ton of serotonin flowing through you and the MRIs that you take in a brain show that neural pathways open up in like crazy ways, right? I have these things that explain this. It is much more likely, in my opinion, that the answer to why I experienced what I did is probably somewhere there rather than, oh, hey, look, it's another thing I don't know the answer to must be supernatural. Well, but just because we don't know so that's correct like uh, as history has progressed we've been able to like define things scientifically that we used to define as supernatural or witchcraft or whatever but that doesn't preclude the opportunity for spirituality um i mean sure it doesn't preclude it but yeah. there's nothing so that so, so like to, to me you're still on but, so, so like my issue is i think you're on 50 50 ground but you think you're on 90 10 like, oh, um, it's definitely, it's not, you're acting like it's like a, it either is or it isn't. It's not 50 50 at all. No way. Oh, wait. So then there's like spiritual components of a, of a, of a biochemical experience? No, it's just like an inductive reasoning thing. There's absolutely nothing that happened to me to make me point or think that it's a supernatural okay. cause was but that's involved. It. So, so you're, you're the one in yes or no. Okay. So like you're saying, so you're saying, so, cause I think, so just like, so I put my, actual belief on the line okay like okay. i think it's a combination of a biochemical experience and a spiritual experience i think there's components of both 
What so, do you need so the I'm spiritual not yes there to no. explain? Like, mm-hmm. what what is unexplainable that you need the spiritual thing to explain it? Well, we, since you already covered shared consciousness, the second thing I would probably bring up is um, these experiential, subjective experiential experiences that um, come into your mind uh, sometimes, like usually, like educationally, and can. So so let's let's take something like a teachable moment from psychedelics. It's a very common like thing that happens. Um, you can you can genesis something like a like a new habit or a new thought or or a new direction in life completely from a teachable moment that comes out of a psychedelic experience and as far as i'm concerned with your experience you didn't have this happen you had a, a, almost like an exclusively bad trip but there are others where you can uh like on peyote like you can meet a plant and that plant will teach you something that you didn't know before. And then you will come out of that with that life lesson in the same way that if you would have got it from a professor in a university or something like that. And that sounds fucking crazy to anybody that hasn't actually experienced it, but that sure. can and we happen. Could propose, and you could propose your spiritual explanation for it. And I could propose a million different hypotheses that the, 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 the plant unlocks like a deeper center in your mind. That's similar to dreams or something where you have some unresolved thing and it bothers you and it brings it to the surface and you're forced to confront it or whatever. Like there's a million different natural explanations for that as well. I don't need anything spiritual or supernatural to explain. I don't that. think the natural explanations completely cover those realities. Like well, that's I, because you don't know all of the insane amounts of biological underpinnings of these drugs. I don't either. I'm not saying I do, yeah, yeah. but it's like the way that this shit imp- like interacts with the brain is incredibly fucking complicated. It's so complicated. But if we both just, okay, so like we can't both, I don't feel like we can both stand on that though. Like where it's like, okay, well, because I don't understand every biological interaction that happens when these psychedelics hit the brain. um, If, and then it's not like worth it. It's not like worthy of their, of discussion for me to say like, well, if I did, I could like, maybe not, maybe like, uh, it would be interesting to go to like all the experts on the field and see like how many of them have some kind of spiritual component to their belief system. And like I like a lot of the psychedelic people that I've uh, encountered or, or, or listened to um, who are approaching this scientifically, like they're doing research at John Hopkins and stuff like that. People like um, uh, Paul Stamos, who's like one of the leading researchers on uh, on uh, psilocybin, has a I, very- I listened to his whole thing, um, his whole three hour thing with Joe Rogan, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, well, he's, he's outside of that. He has like a lot of Like he's a legitimate researcher. Like he's employed by the U S government to do research on psilocybin. So like, yeah, yeah, his Joe Rogan shit is fucking crazy. But the point is like a person like that, that's like a very scientifically minded person is approaching this through scientific method is approaching this through hypothesis is actually concluding that there's a spiritual element to this. But there's a lot of scientific people that are religious as well. Like I basically should trigger something for you that you should know. Yeah. It triggers the fuck out of me. (laughs) <laughs> Basically, I understand that there are models by which we view everything in the universe. And whenever a new unexplained phenomenon comes in, my default assumption is going to be that it fits in our currently existing model, unless it does something that absolutely cannot be explained by our currently existing models. And so I don't think that anything has happened with these spiritual experiences. Like you say, like teachable self moments. I mean, like that can happen like in your own mind. Like you don't need, now, now that's not to say it's impossible that a spiritual experience hasn't occurred, but I'm more likely to side with something that exists within our model, unless there's a phenomenon that absolutely cannot be explained by our current model i think you can shape your current model to an explanation uh so you were saying something on your stream a little while ago where you said that you try not to use something like evolution evolutionary psychology for um uh justifying like why we are certain ways right because you can essentially yeah. extend that model to anything right it's, it's it's post hoc right yeah 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 in that same way you can do that um either on my side for spirituality or, or on your side for science like you can you like it, that that's like the kind of statement that you say well if we understood everything biochemically about the brain we would be able to rule out spirituality you don't know that for sure in the same- no i don't know that yeah. but i do know that if everything that we do understand right now none of it has to do with spirituality and, and all there no and, just from your like, own viewpoint it doesn't um, no, from, from everything we've discovered in modern medicine and modern medical science, that's true. So, like, if I were to go back... Explain like placebo, then. Placebo can be explained through biological mechanisms. How? What do you mean? Your body is capable of, like, raising its own temperature to fight off pathogens and gives your... That's like, just one example of it. Like, like uh, Our body does a million different things, though. I mean, what do you mean? So the, you think, Wait, but, you think you need to, there needs to be a spiritual element to, for a placebo to work? Mm-hmm. I think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for certain things um so like i i do think the body is capable biochemically of like a lot of different things 
but um, there are things that like extend beyond that. I think. Yeah, I guess so. All I'm interested in is what can be tested and verified. If, it, if it's unfalsifiable, then you can literally give any story you want, and it can never be tested, and it can never be right or wrong. So, like, I just don't see any point in like considering it. If you've had an experiential, if you've had an experience of this thing vividly, and and you can recall living a thousand lifetimes, there is no way for you to verify that, that was a spiritual experience or a scientific one. You can maybe lean towards it being a scientific one. Um, and you can kind of say that you, you, that there's like a justification there. The ground is still shaky for me. I, I haven't like really been convinced that that's the case. Um, but you're, you're, you're throwing that out. Um, I think in, in, a, in a way that is a little like disingenuous because you can't really be sure. And you're saying, and so like, are you saying that that experience and every experience you had on mushrooms doesn't matter? Because no, I think it matters it? a great deal. I think it could be an amazing biological experience. I don't need anything spiritual to explain everything that happened. But it you can can't still be verify just... it biologically completely. You said that, right? We, we, no, we, but we... It, but there are biological mechanisms that I can point to. Yes. To say, like, it's reasonable to assume that this would cause this impact. Yeah, for sure. But I don't need a spiritual component to explain anything that happened, I don't think. Uh, so is there... Uh, so the, I guess, like, the disconnect I'm having is... There doesn't seem to be anything in your model that would ever require a spiritual component. There's no scenario where I can paint a picture for you that uh, that you would see a spiritual component as necessary. Um, it's impossible yeah, you would have to in give your me framework. Some, you would have to give me something that I can't explain with my framework. That's okay, how so, frameworks so, work. So let me try. All right. So like, for example, uh, the genesis of a completely new idea that you've never heard before and is nowhere in your memory um, through a psychedelic experience. The problem is that, like, with things like this, it's really, really hard because, like, the human mind yeah, can put together. Yeah, my point is that I... it's hard. Like, like spirituality is always on that sort of gray fringe. It's always on that. I like, know, but weird, that's like the most place. convenient. Like, that's the most convenient, disingenuous place for it to hide because then it can never be proven. <laughs> like, that's the problem. That's the problem I have with spirituality. So, for everything in like my, for everything in the models that we understand to explain like mechanisms of the universe, they have predictive power. They can be experimented with. We can use them to um, create medicines or create other things. But with spirit spirituality it always like hangs out on these fringe edges where it doesn't really give us any useful predictive powers we can't really use it to turn it into anything that can give us anything of value like it just kind of sits what? there as like a fun storytelling it, it, device everything like there are tons of ways that it comes into our um it comes into our reality as uh, as valuable i mean like yoga meditation um long walks in the forest like these are not like um objectively measurable things that but they, 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 they abs- benefit but they no, no, they benefit some people, measurable. they benefit other people, but like, like you can't point to like, well, everyone that walks in a forest is going to become less depressed. You can't do that. Like, I, like that's not a... No, like, but we can use like what we know about physiology in the brain to say that more physical activity tends to produce these effects in people and that the brain is impacted in this way by blah, blah, blah. Like we can do those types of like things. Yeah. And what I'm saying is like that, that'll help you reach like some certain conclusions, but again, like it won't get you to like that... Um, I'm like trying to, ex- this was my whole issue on, um, I thought that it, when you took psychedelics, it would solve this. It didn't. And you were right. You told me that it wouldn't, but, um, the whole idea of spirituality, right. Is there is a sort of like fringe there, there's sort of more to being human than the base experience. And, and there's a lot of BS in that, that all this stuff that doesn't work. Um, all these gurus, like all this, like crystal healing energy stuff. Like I, like I'm well aware of the sort of demons that hide in this, but I don't think that's enough to discount it entirely so that your, your base experience of reality is only what you can verifiably test. What I mean, that if does is it strips it, away your humanity it. by doing that. No, I totally disagree. I totally disagree with that. Why? You can be plenty human without needing a super spooky spiritual thing. No, my dude, you're like a robot. <laughs> yeah, we, like, we are. That's it. That's all we are. No, I mean, you're so much reality. more than that. That's you're what, that's what the experience should have that. shown you, but it was a bad no. teacher apparently because you did it in the wrong way. Like, you're not just a robot. You're way more than that. I mean, 
I, I mean, I guess I, I don't think so. I don't believe that. You're just a biological organism. Like you're, you have all your mechanisms that explain your mind, your body, your health, your, your life, your death. Like I don't know. I don't. I don't see there as being the, the necessity to have anything more than that to explain anything. Do you think that? He, do you think that like monkeys are the same as humans? No. So at what point did we like gain our spirits and our evolutionary history? Well, that. So I think that all. Um... All things have consciousness, right? I've told you that before, or some form okay. of it. Um, sure. Like we're but like we're, I'm asking, like if you don't think that like our well, our consciousness ancestors... can evolve. Uh, like I, the, the, like there's a universal consciousness that evolves, and like uh, or I, I think, and um, so 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 consciousness can evolve just like uh, we evolved from apes and monkeys. You're, you're okay. evolving your consciousness every day. By learning more, so you think that at some point we were a completely so my, is not my a static thing. In my point of view, I, so I'm a materialist, right? I believe that everything comes from 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 matter and shit. I think we've touched on this before. You think that at one point in time, our we were materialistic by nature, like all of our things were non spiritual and shit. But then at some point we evolved, and then we gained like a spiritual component in our evolutionary history. Or no, I think at just some point we evolved to become aware of it. But it always existed. I don't think that like suddenly spirituality just became a concept. Like it was probably something that was baked into the universe in the same way that like all of our laws of physics are. And only humans are capable of perceiving it. No, I think that other animals and other things pretty obviously perceive it, but they don't have the means to communicate it to us. Okay. But but you can guess... you you can learn from uh, you can learn spirituality. You can learn that wisdom from. Um, uh, from like other living things like Siddhartha talks about this Herman Hess right like where you um, can observe another like natural living thing and it can teach you um, to, to 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 discount the the many thousands of years of myth and and uh, and, and, and the power of those things that have been uh, handed down right to to uh, different peoples uh, over the over the million or two million year history of, of, of humanity seems to me to miss a core element of life. Um, and, and here, let me present it actually in a new way that we've never talked about. Um, let's say that all of the spirituality stuff is total mumbo jumbo and that you're absolutely right. Like we're, we're a biochemical organism. We exist on a materialistic, materialist plane where everything sort of is genesis from matter and there's no like trick to it. Um, does that in of itself discount the actual power that myth in our culture has evolved us to have? So like, so is there nothing to gain from all of that myth, all of that religion, all of that stuff that came before? Do you think, do you see what I'm saying? You're saying is there value to be gotten out of stories, even if they're just stories? If we yeah, yeah, let's real? assume that it's all myth. Like, let's assume that it, there's absolutely yeah, no sure, power. Yeah, sure. There's great power for sure. I just think there's better than that. What's better? Um, science and reason. What do you do when you you can't uh, when when you have something that you can't solve with that problem? You change your model. You change your model. Hmm. Yeah. So, like, we couldn't solve. Um, was it planetary bodies? I think couldn't be accounted for um, using Newtonian mechanics. Yeah, the, right like, now the like dark matter. Were all, the yeah. measurements were all like slightly off, so mm -hmm. we had to develop a more. We had to change our model, right? That's what quantum mechanics is. I don't remember if this was over large bodies or small bodies, but um, but yeah, our model couldn't explain it, so then we needed to adapt our model. Okay, so when we're in we're in the realm of like psychology right now, though, right? So so we're talking about um, let's say let's take a simple thing like bettering your human experience okay um would you argue that everything that you need to better your human experience is baked into scientific method and the and, and the model that you use to to sort of like uh, I yeah guess exist i would like, yeah i would hope so yeah i would think so so if you read a book that was a collection of old native american stories about um, animals and sort of the lessons they had, like the tortoise and the hare and stuff. Like those, remember those memes and stuff that you probably listened to some of that stuff when you were sure, a kid. Yeah, you have nothing to gain from that. I mean, you can have stuff to gain from that that's all still explained by materialistic physical things. No. Well, the very concept of myth is a human created 
way to explain our experience of being human. Does that make sense? Okay. Did you follow me there? What myth is, is it's a, through language and sometimes through, through um, other things like meditation or, but, but usually through language, like that'll keep it really simple. It's a, it's a way, it's another way to talk about the experience of being human. Uh, it's another model uh, th th than the one that you have. A and so the way that I try to live my life is I incorporate both models. I try to incorporate yours, uh, although probably most people don't think that I do because I just sound like a wacky spiritual nut compared to you every time that I'm on here. But like, and then I also try to include the spiritual model. Um, so take a good example like um, Star Wars, okay? Where Star Wars, George Lucas worked with Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell is like one of the fathers of American myth or, or bringing myth to America um, to make Star Wars the hero's journey. The hero's journey is a very classic story uh, where you have several different archetypes like the the, the, the spiritual guide that's like the Obi-Wan Kenobi or in Lord of the Rings is Gandalf, right? It always takes the same form. And you see these appear in stories over and over again. Um, you have the, the, the hero who's like the center of it, the antagonist, obviously, right? And all this goes on and on. Um, there are tons and tons of lessons to be learned from Star Wars that are not just like, oh yeah, Han Solo shot Greedo first or whatever. Like there, there's way more to that story that you can pick up about being human, right? About Luke Skywalker's journey up until the last three movies, which fucking blew, but like the, 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 the original ones that came out, right? Like there's a experience there to be had that goes beyond the model that you've defined. No, I think that yeah. all of it can be accounted for in my fit. What do you mean? What 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 part of that is beyond humans telling it's stories and having stories? The, so the myth that... goes the myth transcends scientific models. It doesn't need because it, it's it, or, or or I shouldn't say transcends. I, I think it complements it. Um, I mean, I think it's very much just a part of the human experience. Like, we just, we like telling stories. That can be all be explained with, like, biological and psychological things, though, I think. No, no, I'm saying what's in the stories. What's in the stories is all about the human experience, no? Yeah, but in a different way than your model allows, do you see? So, so like, take something like archetypes. Okay. Um, archetypes teach a different lesson than than scientific models they're very like kind of like wiggly things um wait how is it different than can you give me an example of an archetype that i absolutely can't explain using like basic psych no archetypes themselves are um like really weird kind of like unexplainable things like how they show up in in multiple different cultures over many thousands of years and uh, i mean that, why would, the human that kind of makes sense these. considering we all are all evolved from the same kind of like evolutionary base like you would expect the similar stories to show up over thousands of years right I don't know. Like um, after those, after they've lost contact with each other, and they've had thousands of years to develop their own like stories and myths. You'd, you'd sure, think maybe you'd humans have... are just like inclined to have like these types of similar story experiences. I mean, like we all share evolutionary history, so that it's not like totally nonsensical. So, like, take something like a creation myth, right? Um, where you see that happen in anywhere from like the Bhagavad Gita to the Rig Vedas to like the Bible to like, the, it's like a very similar yeah. It might type just be that humans like to know where they come from. That's like a natural human thing. So yeah. a ton of people just make their own explanations for it. You don't need anything spiritual for that, no? That sounds reasonable. Um, <laughs> like, like, like that sounds like a perfectly good way to explain the actual genesis of those stories. But the value that those stories provide to an individual. The value of the story is the same thing that causes the story to appear. We create things that we consider valuable to us. So, of course, the things we create are going to have value. No, you know? what you get out of the, the story is different from the genesis of it, right? What do you mean by that? Um, creating a story and then justifying why that story exists. Like, okay, human beings created these stories because, we le uh, because of all the reasons you just mentioned. Um, is different from, like, thousands of years later, that story have, having been in the culture um someone sits down to tell their son that story and then their son gets a completely different experience of being human as a result of that story what do you mean by completely different experience of being human what do you mean by that mm. they they um they they take something from it that was different than just the creation of the story on its own like the creation of the story doesn't beget the actual experience you get from learn from hearing the story does that make sense fuck um, i mean it sounds like maybe people 
They're two maybe the things. mind is a wonderful thing and you can just take a lot from stories that <laughs> i mean like no uh, like um the challenge i'm having is okay let me like try to back up a little bit i think there is s such a thing as a spiritual experience of being human um, so there's a really, so there's like a quote on this where it's like, um, if I remember it right, like human beings aren't human beings doing spiritual things. They're spiritual beings doing human things. And, and, yeah, and so it like, really in, anything, I mean, it's, but... it's just an interesting meme. Okay. So like what I'm trying to say with it is that, um, there is a certain experience to being human that um this is really really hard to describe super super difficult to describe in the same exact way that you can't describe certain experiences in language that you had on mushrooms right there's just no way to do it i'm that's why sure. i'm struggling we can't here. communicate we can't communicate any of our conscious experience in words it's not possible yeah so so like, like yeah that like, goes like going all the way down to like what's hot and cold right like yeah. describe cold yeah um so what i'm trying to do right now is i'm trying to do that and that's why i'm failing it's like i'm trying to describe a some an experience of being human th that i would classify as spiritual because it seems to transcend um any other explanation i guess and i can't do it so I don't know. I don't know where that leaves me. Um, but the point I try to make, I think, in these discussions is like I think without that experience, in the same way that if you don't have that experience of psilocybin, that's a an, a loss to you, right? Um, you have to accept that there are experiences you haven't had, um, and yeah. That's that's where I'm at. Hang on. I might have to do more thinking about that at this point. Yeah, I mean, I think I kind of like, I I think I understand what you're saying. I just totally disagree. It just feels like something that if like you, and I could be wrong, but like if you if you grapple with it, it, it seems like you really want there to be a spiritual element. So that's what you see. But like, if you really think about it, there's no reason why you need a spiritual element to explain any of the things that you're talking about. Yeah, I have to do some more thinking on it. I think. Sure. You might be right. Like that might, or or I actually I think like maybe one of the conclusions that I might reach is like, regardless of whether it's spiritual or not, it might not matter. Well, I mean, if it is spiritual, it does matter because if spirituality is a real thing, then I mean, we can incorporate that or use that to better our lives or whatever, right? No, because if the if the model if the model that you have solves it anyway, then it doesn't matter if it's spiritual or not. Well, like, but if my you model just... will leave out something if there's something spiritual. My model doesn't incorporate spirituality whatsoever, so. No, it, it does. Like, um, so like, let's take something like the benefits of meditation. I could say that that's a spiritual thing. Or you could say, well, there's a lot of verifiable evidence that shows that activating the brain in this way triggers like these responses and then leads to this, right? And the conclusion is the same. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but like if the, if if my model accounts for everything, then there is nothing spiritual because it's just it's just physical. If yeah, my model that's that's everything. where that's where you left me. That's why I think I need to do a lot more thinking now because I oh, think that's sure. right. So like um. So what I'm saying is like, uh, unless I can, I think the only way that I can proceed from here and, and I might have to change my beliefs and I'm like so super happy doing that. Like, but the only way I can proceed from here is to present you with something that cannot that explain be explained with your model. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I'm fucked until then. Sure. The <laughs> only problem that I run into, um, or we rather, so like, we've only talked about like, Um, this fucking dude, what an unbelievable fucking game. The only problem with your model, the big problem with your problem, the biggest problem is that if you start to take unfalsifiable things as sources of truth, then you can go down a bunch of scary roads that nobody can talk you out of ever.
that's like the really scary thing. Can you right? do the same thing in your model or no? No, no. Because like for my stuff, I want stuff that can always be testable, that can always be falsifiable, things that can be kind of empirically shown to be true or false, experiences, things that we can all kind of agree on as humans to, to have like some rigor of like how we evaluate things. So like if, if I make a certain statement, we should be able to run some kind of test or some kind of experiment to, to validate that statement, right? Whereas on yeah. a spiritual model, somebody might say something like, I think all people with brown hair need to be eradicated. And I know this because I had a spiritual experience that communicated this to me. And you're like, well, how can you say that? And they're like, well, I don't really need to prove this to you. Like, this is a spiritual experience. Like, that's it. You know, like, I can't talk to that person because they've already decided that they can take something completely unfalsifiable and believe it to be true. So I can't communicate with that person anymore to try to explain why their idea is wrong. Because by definition, I can't do that because it's unfalsifiable. Right? Okay, I understand that. But at some point, you have to reach a conclusion based on probability, right? Yeah, of course. Because Everything you can't objectively know that um, um, eating salads has a health benefit scientifically or anything. Sure. You can't objectively know anything. So yeah, at that's some true. Point... But, 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 but you got to be really careful when you get into that degrees of probability. Yeah. It, I can only probabilistically agree that my model is better, but those degrees of probability are several orders of magnitude higher than because of spirits. Right. So like <laughs> I can't actually truly 100% know that when I get into an airplane, I'm not going to phase into like another dimension or some shit. Right. I can't know that. However, I am much more reasonably certain that an airplane is going to get me from point A to point B than I can be that praying to Gandhi is going to make my dick grow 32 inches. Now, yeah. both of those are uncertain, but, but, but we can speak in degrees of probability about both. Yep, that, that totally makes sense. But where do you draw the line at that point? I mean, we can get down by numbers or whatever. I mean, how many thousands or millions of flights have occurred with airplanes that have all ended successfully? No, 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 I'm sorry. I mean, I mean like... Um... Where, where do you uh so let's say that like you research a lot of stuff about intermittent fasting mm -hmm. what point do you come to the conclusion where you say okay i can reasonably assume that this has like a benefit on my life like like what's enough studies what's enough uh, what what's enough um evidence that's a know, subjective like, definition you're making a subjective no, 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 opinion i mean to some extent but like five or ten like five or ten studies with i mean 15 20 people would be like well, that's like moving me towards like um you know pretty good feelings that this is probably something real that is going to be looked into more like um but but i mean that's way more than just like there are no there are zero spirituality studies that that are in, that indicate like spiritual things there's not a single one of these so i mean like e even that is like way way different plus all of these studies still have biological underpinnings to the mechanisms that kind of explain why we think these things are happening whereas there are no studies on like this spiritual thing happens and we know because of human spirits that this thing happens right Yeah. Um, how would you how would you define spirituality? Um, um, it's not metaphysical. I think it's uh, supernatural. Any anything that's beyond matter. Anything that is beyond matter. Yeah. So, what's consciousness then to you? Co what, to me? Yeah. Um, in your, in your everybody's got a different explanation for it but for me consciousness is the um is the decision process that we have where we figure out how to operate the mechanisms given to us so like how do we move our arms how do we move our legs and then what's the optimal way to go about doing that like that decision making process is our consciousness so where is it in our it, it takes place in our brain would be where it arises from i guess but you can't we haven't found it yet well, I mean, we know it's somewhere in the brain. I mean, if you we don't you know that, we can be reasonably certain. I think. I wouldn't say that either. You really think well, so? I mean, you you, th you yeah, think that? Yeah, for sure. Neuroscience has hit the point where we can be reasonably sure that consciousness uh, comes from the brain. I mean, your consciousness like dramatically changes if things happen to your brain, which I think points to. And and we modify things in the brain to dramatically change your experience as a person. So I mean. Okay, so that you, points to me. That makes me think that I mean, you can probably be reasonably certain that your personality and your experience and all that is probably contained in there. Sure. So, how does consciousness fit into your model? Because uh, you define spirituality as anything beyond matter, uh, but you think consciousness has a material component. Or no, I think consciousness arises entirely from material components. That's it. It's all material. Nothing is supernatural or non-physical when it, in regards to consciousness. Okay. Um, and you're saying, so you're saying that consciousness is 
a product or projection, maybe more accurately, of, of an individual's brain. What I'm saying is that if you create a thing, yeah, you give it um, enough sensory inputs so that it can detect the environment around it, and then you give that thing, um, like um, if you give that thing some sort of appendage that it can choose to move, and then you give that thing a process by which it can weigh the pros and cons of moving those things, that consciousness will arise. That whatever that process is, what I would describe as consciousness. So if I were to create um, a robot and give it one wheel and one arm to pick food up and put it into its mouth, and then I were to grant it some process by which it could learn how to acquire the most food, and then I were to um, give it a, give it like a computer chip that would allow it to um, like learn like what results in like the optimal acquisition of food, that that resulting process would be consciousness. Does that make sense? So you think that, um... Like, uh, so, you know, like the AI theory, how there's like a lot of debates where like, uh, some people think that we can't create AI because there's some yeah. barrier to, con you don't believe that at all. You think, no, you I think that I absolutely 100% and I would bet my whole life behind it mm -hmm. that, um, a, that, a, an AI, if an AI is sufficiently complex that it could 100% emulate a human experience completely and totally. Yeah. Okay, but in the same way, we would never be sure it is, right? In the same way that we can't be, we can't describe. You just, just said no. We, we would have describe. to just inductively reason it. In the same way that yeah. you and I can never be sure that we have the same conscious experience, right? Yeah, but you have to get there through inductive reasoning and language back yeah. and forth, like about shared experience. Okay, so so you're sure that you're sure you're certain that consciousness can be replicated um, by completely artificially. Uh, I mean, the, I can't be 100% sure, but I've never that. seen any evidence that we need any kind of supernatural phenomenon to explain what goes on in the human mind. And if none of it is supernatural, then it must be physical. And if it's physical, then that means it can be created by us at some level. Okay, so, so everything that comes into your conscious experience is also a product of physical... Well, physical physicality of matter also because because yes, consciousness everything. is born from matter like you said everything that encompasses consciousness and conscious experience is also that is that right yeah correct everything okay. is everything is yeah so wait did scare a host me oh this is a real bad game guys you came in at a real <laughs> bad time I'm just playing a game of League of Legends that I love so much, though. Sorry, we're talking about some shit. Okay, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> we're talking about the nature of If you want to get back to um, your games... No, 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 just go. No, I don't yeah. give a fuck about it. Fuck League and fuck League Varies. Go ahead, keep going. <laughs> okay. Um... I'm putting myself together. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. If it feels like you're slower in the conversation or whatever, it's just, I've thought about these topics a lot. Like I've talked about them with other people and I, so I've thought about them a lot. So that's why a lot of my responses, I'm not like thinking this all up on the fly. Yeah. They're already kind of prepared. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, um, I think this one particular meme really, really got me. Which one was that? Um, I can't, I can't explain a way. I can't give you anything. That can't be explained with my current yeah. model, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, and so that almost essentially makes the model infallible. Um, because even if, uh, even if I do think it's spiritual experience, it doesn't actually matter. Yeah. They can be completely accounted for. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and then further, if there's a probability that it's accounted for by, um, uh, a biological or biochemical function, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like in terms of physics, like Here's... Newtonian mechanics or whatever are completely and totally uh, irrelevant to everything and everything. Like uh, everything that we understood classically about mechanics can be explained with quantum mechanics. We don't need like the old rules to explain it and quantum mechanics to explain new stuff. Everything that we knew of the old can be extrapolated fr from quantum mechanics, right? So like the, the last system becomes like deprecated. There's no point to it. It doesn't explain anything different. It's just totally deprecated the problem i have with this model uh it's not necessarily like um it doesn't falsify it but it seems to lead you to like complete uh depression like oh yeah like except gravity sorry <laughs> um 
that this is a personal thing that I would consider to be a personal shortcoming. If you need magic to explain, or if you need magic to make the universe interesting to you, um, I would consider that to be a, a personal shortfall. I, I, but that's from obviously from the way I view the universe, right? Well, no, because um, let, let's take like something like particularly depressing. Okay, so let, let's say that um, death. How about that? Mm, death is like or, uh, okay. I, I'm gonna give you something that, like, in my opinion, is more depressing than death. Um, okay. What if if you're locked into a certain set of variables? So Jordan Peterson has a. I know you love him so much. Has this like really uh really big meme about IQ that you probably agree with? Actually, it's probably one of the things you agree with 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 him. Um, uh -oh. That IQ is something that you absolutely cannot modify or ever improve on. Um, I sense, don't think I don't think Jordan Peterson has said that, and I know that's not true. That's why I know he hasn't said it because he's usually pretty good about like research related stuff. So he says there's no way to in to improve i don't want to paraphrase him you're right i can't i don't know enough about i don't remember enough about what he said to do it but the, but but all like <sighs> what i'm trying to say is like oh, but it doesn't matter to the actual discussion so like um if you're locked into a certain thing because biochemically that's all your brain can do that's a depressing uh -huh. concept for example sure yeah but I mean, like, you have to accept that and, and then live your life. Like, you, just because something is depressing doesn't mean that you can just say that, like, well, that's too depressing for me. Now I need to embrace fantasy because I can't deal with that reality. Because, because the problem is, again, what I said, that fantasy will send you down roads in the future that are not good. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. It does. Yeah. So, like, here's a, here, like, I can name a personal example about this, okay? Many people are incapable. Most people are incapable about accepting negatives about themselves. They'll try to spin it into a positive experience. Incapable so for instance, or just not willing to? Or, I'm sorry. I should say not willing to. I okay. use incapable yeah. hyperbolically, okay? But they're not mm -hmm. willing to. So, like, here's an example. A lot of weak people might say something along the lines of, like, oh, well, you know, I don't need to be strong because it's worthless or because I don't want to waste time in the gym, et cetera, et cetera. Like, they might say something like that, right? Um, like, to try to justify what is really what is what is it what is actually a negative trait like there is no way around that it's just a it's just a, a, a net it's a strictly negative trait um but but m not many people are willing to say something along the lines of like oh like you know i have this trait and it is negative and i accept that now i can either accept that i have this trait about myself that's negative or i can work to change it right sure it just seems it seems like such a weird thing because you're always making a subjective experience at some point that you actually have that negative trait or that positive trait because again you can't be sure so like like what i don't understand about your model is like there's some sort of like weird voodoo amount of studies or something that convinces you like so like let's say that um i've been trying to work out for the last five years and i'm trying to get to um a certain percentage of body fat and a certain look but my um my body type or whatever the reason is or biochemically doesn't allow for that right at what point do i say oh this is not a result of my laziness or a result of me not trying or a result of whatever it's a result of something that is a biochemically unaccessible to me and so i have to reach this conclusion um i, I mean you, you have to be honest with yourself and be introspective and go by some level of personal assessment i guess but I you mean, can't be sure so that's not enough like, like you have to go by out you just have to go by outcomes like if you're like, if you're literally working out like every single day and you're eating appropriately and you're dieting appropriately and, and you're doing all of that correctly and you really feel like you are and you're not making any progress past like literally like a, like a 65 pound bench press or whatever. Yeah. Then I mean, at that point, I would consider like going to the hospital and seeing if something's wrong with you. And you're not, um, before assuming anything supernatural, I would assume that there's some underlying physiological condition at that point. Yeah. So you're saying that whether or not it's like depressing or um, like that reality sucks, it is reality. So you have to contend with that. And, to, and I'm to, saying that just and, because and something is sad is not a good reason to totally blow it off or pretend it's not real. That's you're delu that's being delusional. Yeah. Right. Like imagine, um, it, it would like um, this is gonna sound like really sad, but like imagine you've got a guy that like um, is writing letters to his mom every day or some shit, who and his mom like died or something. Um, imagine you've got something like that going on, and, and you're doing that forever. Um, like, 
if it's something that you do because it's comforting to you, but you acknowledge that your mom's dead, that's fine. But like, if you really think she's alive, would you argue that that person is like doing a good thing? It's okay for him to pretend that that's real, that that's reality. That's a healthy thing to do. Or would you argue, well, his inability to accept the universe as it is, is probably going to hamper his ability to think positively about other things as well? What, like, which one would you be more likely to think? Yeah, you definitely think that, he, that his delusion is yeah. hampering Yeah, because it shows you can't deal with mm -hmm. reality. Like, mm -hmm. that's not a healthy thing. You have to be able to deal with reality to move on. It it's, it allows you to equip yourself with, with the best mentality possible to make the best decisions possible going forward. So where does where does motivation come from in your model? For me, personally... I'm uh, like a hedonist. I do things that make me happy. I have things that I know make me happy on a physical level. And those are the things that I pursue. Um, and I, I like it when other people around me are happy because it usually makes me happier. So I try to ensure that the other people around me are reasonably happy as well. That's my, that's how I build most of my kind of like values or whatever. Um, so if someone was like trying to get motivated to be like better than themselves, like it doesn't seem like your model helps because there's no hope in it. <laughs> Is that sa sounds like incredible. Wait, what do you mean? No, there's yeah. plenty of hope. What do you mean? That's why I'm changing my diet. I'm trying to, I'm finally losing these fucking 15 pounds and I need to lose. Like, yeah, I mean, you can always improve yourself. What do you mean? Well, you don't need, there doesn't need to be any spirituality or anything bigger than that, than yourself to want to self-improve. You I, I, I don't know. So the model is like, so I know this like probably is really obvious to a lot of people, but the model is so fundamentally different from how I've ever thought. Like I've, I'm trying to figure out why yeah. it is. Yeah. And I yeah. understand the fundamental difference, but again, like you, you have ways of criticizing my model, for instance, um, you, you would look down on my model and be like, how depressing that the human experience is all there ever is and all there ever will be. Um, you're literally, as soon as you're dead, you're gone forever. There is no greater purpose or any guiding thing. Like your life is empty and lost. Like those would be maybe, maybe your criticisms of my model, but then I would turn around and I would criticize your, yours and similar way mm -hmm. right that if you give somebody um so many amazing tools and so many amazing things in this existence that for them to devalue all of them by saying that all of them are intrinsically meaningless without some sort of fantasy higher power to assign value to them that that would be equally as sad as the way that you view me in my model right that would be my criticism of yours that a person would look at this universe not be content with what they have and then invent some fantastical story to exist here because they're not capable of coping with the universe as it exists right yep that makes perfect sense um yeah. The only, the only, the only small issue is like it, um, well, I guess, no, it's not an issue. Cause I was going to say, if you, if you leave it out, what happens? Like what, what if it, that, what if that really is objective reality and there, and there is like a place you go past. Well, I mean, something? if there is, that's yeah. awesome, then I, but I'm only going to be better off for it. If I die and I find out that there is an extra place afterwards then I like profited massively. Well, unless you go but to hell I... cause you didn't worship Jesus or something. If, if hell is determined by whether or not you worship a guy that doesn't give any types of reasons or evidence for you to do so, then I mean, so be it. I'd rather go there than go to the other place. I mean, I, and I think that's a very fair statement. Like, I don't think yeah, I've lived my life in a way that, I mean, or I guess it's possible, but, um, <laughs> but I mean, like we can do, um, I think there's a, there's a razor, I think, um, it's not Oakland's razor, but I think there's a razor to explain this dilemma. Um, like the difference between between me and a Christian is that a Christian, I don't believe in like 942,850 gods. The Christian doesn't believe in 942,849 gods, right? Like there's just one more, like how could you ever, like if you go by that mentality, oh yeah, Pascal's wager is irrational in my opinion, right? Pascal's wager, if you're not familiar with it, is the idea that like, well, you might as well believe in God just in case you get butt fucked in the end. Oh, yeah, like, okay, but there's like a million different gods to believe in. How could you ever acknowledge that? Like why even gamble it at that point? Like yeah. aren't you more likely to piss off another god by worshiping the wrong one than just by <laughs> being atheist or agnostic or a religious you know like yeah um th so so the last bastion i have to stand on in this is um mm -hmm. what if it's possible to achieve a greater happiness through my model even if it's not true than yours um greater i mean you're asking happiness. me to solve the 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 epitome of, of um or, or like the big meme of uh, ignorance is bliss, right? No, no, um, not necessarily. What I'm saying is like, there's actually like- No, a... absolutely. Like, let's say for instance, you have two people and one of them, okay, so like, here's a quick example, okay? The world is going to end in, in 10 days. Yeah. One person knows about it and one person doesn't. Who's better off for it? The person that has more information and more knowledge or the person that doesn't know? Depends on their perspective, I guess, right? Well, does it? I mean, do, is there really any point in knowing that the world is going to end in 10 days? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I guess not. So I, yeah. I, so I, I mean, is it, you know, it's entirely possible that you take one person and you split the universe in two and in one life, 
this person is a worshiper of Jesus Christ. He, you know, maybe he was an alcoholic. He finds God. He goes to church. He participates in charities. Um, in going to church, he meets a wonderful woman. He creates a family. He lives a life of God and all that shit. And his life is actually super good. Mm -hmm. um, in another world, he never finds God. He remains an alcoholic. He doesn't see there being any greater purpose in life. He becomes a meth head, kills himself in an alleyway like four years later, overdosing on some drug. Yeah. You know, is the guy that pursued, you know, ultimate truth or didn't get lured by religion, you know, better off than the other guy? I mean, in that particular circumstance, maybe not, but. In that circumstance, but um, what I'm saying is like, uh, I guess this is what I was maybe trying to get at before was like, it whether it's whether I guess it's true or not, I guess it actually stands outside of it. I used to think before I talked to you that it didn't. I, I now think it stands outside of it. But what say that like the experience of um, meditation and the beliefs that, or, that, that that come with that, that like you're actually accessing a higher plane or something, just using something completely arbitrary. Um, would would get you to like an average level of happiness that's higher than someone else with your model? Well, since you're I guess a hedonist, I personally don't believe that that's possible, but I could be wrong on that. But since you're a hedonist, you would want to fit with the model that makes you the happiest, isn't that right? Yeah, but as part of hedonism, one of the things that I value is like rational thought, like in reasonable thought processes. That's like a big important thing to me. Do you Maybe value rational only... thought of your own happiness? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, then you would you would uh, select rational thought but, but i but i don't a lot of people but do i that? wouldn't be it wouldn't make me personally happy to um forego like intellectual rigor to embrace an idea that i consider irrational i wouldn't get happiness from doing that ever at any point in my life ever i would never enjoy that don't you think a large amount of people would yeah and for that's sure. why we have yeah, a like trump. <laughs> what's <laughs> Look at all the Trump fans out there. Yeah, of course. Mo there, I don't think many people really care about reasonable thought processes. Most people want stories and narratives that they can relate to. Well, my understanding, of hedonism, emotional ways. my understanding of hedonism was that you are always trying to seek the greatest happiness possible for yourself. Sure. Yeah. And, yes. And so if, if you, but you're, but then at the same time, you're saying rational thought. Yeah. I guess. So what you're, you're concluding is that rational thought brings you more happiness. Yeah. That's what makes yeah. me happy. That's when I, that's why I got into debating. I like arguments and I like, you know, like ABCD conclusions and all that. Yeah. That's all very enjoyable to me. And I don't think I could be happy believing in something that I had very little evidence for. That wouldn't make me happy, I don't think. Okay, but you do acknowledge like a lot of other human beings may get greater happiness from that than from rational thought. That's possible, but I would argue that overall, it's. I think that that is a, what I would argue is that that is a predictor for future sorrow and that I am better equipped to deal with sorrow than that person Whoa, would, would be what I would argue. Um, because I have a very realistic outview of the world. If, if bad shit happens, I can deal with it. I can process it and I can move on from that. Whereas a person that is like super religious and maybe thinks that everything happens for a reason, maybe a car accident happens and his wife is killed. And now all of a sudden he's questioning his entire fucking life. No, 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 that not necessarily. Was... He might actually say like, well, this is the will of God. And he might be better off for it. Right. Like, like that, that could just as easily happen. Well, I don't um... know why your model solves for that better than his does. Because I can reliably solve for it, and his is a is a crap shot. He thinks he can reliably solve for it, like like yeah. So, but how so many times do people lose their religion because of that? I mean, but then again, also people like us, quote unquote, find God. Yeah, when these like so. So here's the thing: is like I think so. I completely and utterly agree that this model brings you the greatest amount of happiness. I don't know if I agree that it brings it to a lot of other people, and I think like um to to use uh your your inductive reasoning meme right um you see a lot of people. Inclu uh, I, I think you'd probably consider me reasonably intelligent. Chat would disagree, but like, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm somewhere in there. And like, I, I have the pretty spiritual model of the universe. Like, right, um, it brings me some kind of happiness to think that we're not just in this like uh, void that sucks and, <laughs> and, and there's no greater meaning, right? Um, I, I think a lot of people would default to these beliefs because they find greater happiness through them in the same way that like, um, what, like, let me, let me use a really objective example, like where, uh, like love, right. Where I could say, well, love is like a biochemical thing where, um, and I'd be curious about your opinion on this, but it's like, it's a biochemical thing where like, it's just like produced because we need to reproduce. And like, we have an impetus to do that as human beings. So like you get attracted to this person and all that stuff can be explained. Or you could say like, no, like love is this like beautiful, ephemeral thing, ethereal thing that like, um, floats through and, and, and like, and like exists on like a higher plane. And that belief like causes you to love that person that much more because you think it transcends your experience as a human. And that gives you a much more fulfilling relationship objectively. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's possible. I haven't thought about this before. I'll have to think about it more in the future. Woo! I did something. I mostly got blown the fuck out, but I had something there. 
Yeah, so basically what your argument boils down to is that maybe naturally as humans, we aren't we aren't wired to process things in a rational way and that it makes more sense for us from a biological level to process things in an irrational manner, right? Uh, quite possibly. And the and the evidence I have of that is that it happens all over the place that most human beings are irrational. They don't they don't default to rational thought as their greatest form of happiness. They default to emotional uh, stuff. Like that's how most people are. They are religious. They are spiritual. They do believe in weird shit. They do think crystals are going to heal them. They do think that Reiki foot massages work, right? They think that uh -huh. stuff because that's obviously bringing them some kind of greater satisfaction despite it being a delusion, possibly. Yeah, sure. The thing is that the thing I don't like about those thought processes though is that they lead uh, 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 they lead us down a lot of bad roads. That I I, are I think scary to me. that they can. So yeah. like things like for instance mm. like should we teach evolution in school right because a lot of people don't just take these little nuggets they take a whole uh, a whole mouthful of bullshit along with what they believe in right like very few people believe that just like life has a purpose because of spirituality they also believe like in the christian god and shit which sends you down a whole bunch of like really dumb roads and shit um yeah but again um I'm just taking a note on that like like ag again if the end outcome is greater happiness for the individual does it matter I mean, if it's at a detriment to society and possibly even greater happiness, then yeah, I would argue that that is bad. If it's possible for them to be happier otherwise, right? My hope would that my hope would be that you can find happiness in other ways, that you don't need the spiritual voodoo to do it. No, 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 because we already like we need to stay on on the ground floor. There, we already established that it's possible that someone that is not using your model, which is rational thought and materialist, right? can achieve okay. uh, greater happiness for themselves or at least different happiness, I guess. Greater would probably be important to, to, to say, but like then they could using your model. Uh, so, so sorry, let me put that way more simple. That was like a bunch of fucking bro science. Um, rational thought isn't necessarily the end all be all for happiness for most people. Would you say that? Sure. I'm just saying that the other ideas that people tend to have when they start to embrace irrational thought sends us down objectively bad things in society. So like one example of this might be um, teenagers that get pregnant. Um, Jesus fucking Christ, it's cancer. Um, teenagers that have children tend to do really bad in society. And the children of those um, teenagers tend to do really badly in society. So maybe we can do something like increase the level of sex education to these children. And that would be like a net positive to these people. However, since some people are only capable of finding happiness through religion, they also believe that like teaching children about sex ed is a moral wrong. So now in order to make some people happy, we've got them embracing some patterns of irrational thought, but that irrational thought also causes them to embrace other patterns of thought that are actually detrimental to people in the long run. Or like women, for instance, that become self-hating after a while. Um, women that will that they themselves will say things like, oh yeah, women belong at home, never working. Women shouldn't be in the work. Like, they're actual women that believe this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Internalized misogyny or whatever, right? Um, and I would argue that their lives are like measurably worse off as a result of these types of things. Um, yeah. Okay, I agree with everything you said, but that doesn't change the fact that you are in this reality with those people that believe that way. So you can't preclude their input from the table really sure but the problem is problems. that i can't but the problem is that i can't disentangle the personal happiness that they get from the other batshit insane beliefs that they get like if christians believed like whatever they needed to to be happy whatever dumb fuck shit they believe in to be happy and then i could get them to throw away all the garbage with it i probably wouldn't care that much but the problem is that christians bring with them a whole lot of fucking autistic baggage that i can't cut through because um because they need it in order to be happy so, so like now in order for me to get rid of this person's like thoughts on this, these cancerous thoughts on like global warming or evolution or social progress, I have to make them get rid of the thing that makes them happy too. Like I can't, I can never disentangle those two things. Right? You, ha you have to do something if you are actually trying to find solutions to bond beyond just debating for the sake of it. Um, if you want to actually solve these problems, you have to address those, their models. 
whether they're flawed yeah, or not. Yeah, but I can't do it. The only way to do it is to, like, fucking reform. What's the point religion. of your whole, like, deal, then? Like, what's the point of, like, you even debating these things if you can never... Oh, for me, I debate because I like the I like to find out what arguments are correct. That's enjoyable for me. My my purpose of my debates, I've said this a million times, has never been to convince other people. I don't... To, there are ways to do that. I just don't do that because it's not interesting to me. But you can do it. Like, you would basically open the book of, like, fallacious appeals, and you would start working your way through those. Those are the easiest ways to convince um, people. Like, appeals to um, appeals to nature or, you know, appeal to anecdotes, stories, yeah. storytelling, stuff like that. Yeah, I remember you were like that. that story of that woman that you debated, and you had the Yeah, anecdote. yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. it's, you can yeah. get people to agree with you, you, you know, telling stories and stuff like that. Basically, like, doing fallacious appeals. That's the best way to, to get people on your side. Um, but that's not interesting to me or enjoyable to me. The trouble is, I think you're... I, I literally think that, like, if you're not trying to solve these problems, you're actually just jerking yourself off. I mean, um, yeah, of course. Everything I, I'm a hedonist. Everything I do is jerking myself off, right? To some extent. Yeah, I, but I do, you're not I, actually like, like, the solving the world's problems. You're just like... No, I'm not trying. My goal is never to solve the world's problems. I just enjoy the debating. I enjoy the... the searching for like the reasonable <laughs> thought patterns and everything that's that's the enjoyable part to me i it, my, it was never a goal to like i want to change the world or i want to like bring people into my side that was never the goal for what i do oh geez yeah maybe you thought i was way more noble than i actually am i, I did <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so you're literally just um you're you're literally just doing this because i guess you enjoy it and you have yeah, no interest in helping anybody fun. else like come to any kind no, of conclusions or bettering that, anybody People are fucking retarded, dude. Do you really I would think kill that? myself if that was. Oh fuck yeah! Holy shit! This whole devolvement into politics has maybe lost so much fucking respect for people, dude. I'm waiting for this country to get fucking nuked. I'll celebrate it. I'll be outside. I'll be like all the Muslims that Trump invented that were outside celebrating when 9/11 happened. <laughs> Wait, you're evil though. <laughs> you're actually <Man>. an evil person. <laughs> I, I don't know, dude. I have. I lost a lot of respect for people over the past couple of years, at least in the United States. Maybe it's not as bad around the world, but. People in the U.S. are fucking retarded. Holy shit. Well, okay. It makes perfect sense to me why the the other people's emotional-based or religious-based models don't matter to you because you don't give a fuck about other people. So yeah, generally. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay. Um, I, don't... I mean, unless, unless it's somebody whose happiness I need to be concerned with. If it's somebody directly around me or somebody that I need to work with or something, yeah. Um then why why do you like sit down with someone like Reckful and like uh, like objectively help him which i think I, did. is super interesting to me i love talking to the guy i think he's really intelligent and i think it's really sad that his life is as fucked as it is mm -hmm. it would make me happy to see him happier i guess I, I think that he's smart i think that he's too smart to be as like mentally fucked as he is right now got it okay but um if someone was outside of your sort of personal circle right um you you wouldn't help them I mean, so in general, I think that helping more people is better because it tends to produce better outcomes for me, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. So if there's like, yeah. So if there's the idea of, um, if there's an idea of like voting for something that improves the condition of most people in the country, I'm more likely to be in favor of that, even if I'm going to make a personal sacrifice for it, because it ultimately improves my outcomes or the outcomes of my child that I'm concerned with, if that makes sense. Yep, makes perfect sense. Um, if there was like an old lady on the street, would you help her across? Always, yeah. So I always but do only things because like- it makes you feel better yeah sure yeah I think it's about no lady. well i think that everybody like doing things to make everybody feel better is generally better for me so yeah like if i'm ever driving through like if people are doing construction it's always really nice to stop at like dunkin donuts or some shit you get like a dozen donuts people always love that shit you've done this yeah all the time if people like work if you see like people working on like lawns or on uh roofs or some shit in the neighborhood you can always pick them up like coffee and shit people love that stuff yeah, but I, I think really... that like for, I think that for everybody like because if more people act like that in the world, it improves my experience as well. Like I would want somebody to do that for me, right? So that's an incredibly noble thing to do. But at the same time, why don't you acknowledge that your platform, like that you have, because like, I, because the broadcasting... goal isn't ultimately nobility to me. I don't think that their lives have intrinsic value, and I'm not too concerned personally with whether or not at the end of the day I'm enriching their life. It's more just like in a roundabout way of acting like that. Maybe more people act like that or or pass it on or whatever. And at the end of the day, it improves my personal experience. No, how sense. does your um how does your how does that any different from bringing donuts to construction workers to help enrich people's lives on the platform that you have um, it would I mean, absolutely I, make the world better so in the exact like, same way that you're defining sure, sure, sure. it so like i do it but it's with a different intention i guess that's what you have to be careful of and i, I actually just realized this a couple of weeks ago i think that people think way more highly of me than they should be um i don't have like noble intentions to to improve the world and to make everything a better place because i love humanity and because i love other people that mm -hmm. i don't care i don't give a fuck about any of that shit i only care about myself but 
to make the world a better place for myself, it's generally better to improve the experience of other people. Does that what make you're sense? Doing, yeah, but then that's what, yeah. I, that's what it breaks down because you, you would be doing that by enriching and enlightening other people on your platform. Um, I don't get why yeah, you, you cut it off at the stream. The problem, you'll bring donuts well, but, to you'll bring donuts to fucking to, construction workers, but you'll be like, fuck all these people in chat. Yeah, because like, that, because no that's value. really that's really 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 easy to do. I'm not gonna make a gr so for instance. What I you, could you, it, I, it's no, no, not no, easy to enrich people. No, that's very hard, and I really don't enjoy it. Because the best way to convince people to come over to your side is to use irrational arguments, and that's not fun for me. I don't enjoy that at all. I hate that experience. Huh. What? So so. Would you deny that what you're doing now in um, is not enriching people? No, it definitely enriches some people. Yeah. Just not as many as if I was like a full-on activist. Okay, so like if you had a YouTube channel and you had like an irrational point of view that you're trying to say like, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Like, I get a lot of emails from people saying, like, oh, hey, thanks, I really appreciate this video, blah, 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 or whatever. Yeah, I'll bet you um, did. Yeah, I mean, I'll yeah. bet you do, yeah. Um, yeah, it's so different from, like, how I interpret things. Like, I, I tend to do things because I feel like I have an almost obligation to help as many people as possible. Which also brings me a lot of personal happiness, but like I sure. and I also feel the same obligation. It's just that my motive is much different, I guess, if that makes sense. Like I feel like I should help as to some extent without without like great personal sacrifice. I'll try to help as many people as possible. This is why I'm generally in favor of things like tax increases and whatnot, because it's not usually a big deal for me to pay a little bit more money on my taxes, but I can greatly improve the experience of other people around me, which by way of them being better off improves my experience. If that makes sense. I guess like uh, that's not really hedonism exactly, is it? Um, I That's mean, kind it's, of like, like a, I'm kind of like splitting like, hairs, but you know. is there any like? It, can you ever truly be altruistic if you're really doing it because you enjoy it? Is that altruism? Like, I don't know. That's maybe somebody else. There's probably better arguments written about that. Yeah. Huh. I'll have to think a lot more about about your uh, your model. Sure. My, my and also my model is really unintuitive and it's very cold. Like I don't think most people would embrace a model like this. And in fact, even me talking about it, there's probably the two biggest trains of thoughts going on right now are um one, uh, oh wow, Justin is a sociopath, or two, oh he's just lying because he wants to sound really edgy. Um, these are the two most common ways that people approach my thought process. It happens a lot when I have vegan debates. So I mean, like I don't think the I don't know if, like the average person could should like embrace my form of thinking. I just do it for whatever reason because it seems to work for me. But um. Yeah. So would you say that in, on your platform, you advocate this thinking? No, I don't really? think so. I don't think most people would be comfortable with it. No. You, I mean, you say that to me now, but by virtue of the way that you um, sort of like weave everything that you do on the debates and the, you, you, I think you would like bring, you have probably brought a large amount of your viewers over to this to my way of thinking? No, not like that. Most you know, like people so? view my way of thinking on the surface level, and most of them probably feel like I have, I feel like I have some greater social obligation um, that I like, that I legitimately care about women or that I legitimately care about minorities or whatever is probably like what their point of view is. Um, when in reality, I'm just doing whatever I can that I think maximizes my own personal experience mm -hmm. and, and women doing better in the society and minorities doing better in society are amazing for me, right? If Imagine if like, you know, women and, and, and minorities watched video game streams as much as everybody else did because they had the same socioeconomic advantages. I would have twice or three times the viewer base, you know? Um, Do you really think like that? Like, did that, has that actually yeah, connected sure. for yeah, you before in your women, mind? If women were involved in gaming as much as men, I could double my viewership or even more because I'm so cute, you know? Like, that's yeah. definitely something that factors into my mind when I think of, like, greater involvement in games. It's why gamers, and even in terms of, like, if you want more people to fuck, like, gamers should be all for, like, more women being included in games. You don't want it to always be a massive fucking sausage fest, yeah. do you? Right? Like, yeah, you should, all, yeah absolutely that makes perfect sense but that's but that's actually like so that was actually what your brain did though you were like uh, that, that just like trying to go back through that you're like if women get more rights and come into gaming in a more equal way i'll get laid more and i'll have more viewers that was your actual thinking i mean yeah i i guess like so the <laughs> are you familiar with the term like more nihilism or whatever I know what nihilism is. I, I, yeah, so like I don't yeah. believe that anything has any like objective value or objective meaning or objective anything in the universe. I don't think that humans are any different than than monkeys or rocks or anything. Um, I, I don't think that there's some intrinsic value to our life or anybody's life or anything like that. So 
you know, any respect that I have for other people is always going to come from other areas than some internal desire to, to believe that people ought to be treated better or something. I don't know if I believe that there's like any, if we have any moral imperative or anything like that to act in certain ways. Oh man. So I actually get it. So like what's happening is that everyone thinks you're just memeing, but you're actually serious. Yeah, I'm, be, I'm very serious enough, but oh, most shit. people, again, most people believe that I'm either trolling um, or that I'm being, um, or they think that I'm either being a psycho, I'm either a psychopath or they think, oh, he's just saying this, but he doesn't really mean it. Nobody yeah. really means this. Is Yeah, generally how it goes. But you're completely serious. <laughs> yeah. This is why I stopped doing like the vegan debates because it's really obnoxious going through my subreddit and everybody's like, oh, he's just trying to be edgy. He doesn't actually mean this. Like, okay, yeah, sure. I mean, I can't like tell you if I'm being, like, how can you believe me if I'm, if you think I'm not being sincere, you know? Yeah. And that's like the final point that they can rely on on uh to yeah, sort of they, like, try to defeat like, oh, you Destiny yeah. doesn't actually believe this mm -hmm. he's yeah. because you can never verify to them that you do exactly um, because you can never communicate a conscious experience to another person yeah. yep so that, that's where you get stuck and so you were just like okay i totally get it yeah and the reason i know that you actually believe this is because i know you really well and i know that you're completely serious about this yeah yeah and the funny thing is like there's um i think for you personally right there's like like almost nothing wrong with you, you believe in this because it, it obviously you definitely seem to be happier than most people I know. Yeah. Um, I'm super happy. You, you're very successful. Um, but by any definition, like, like by any, by any societal definition. Um, yeah. So maybe you got it figured out, buddy. Well, I mean for myself, but again, I wouldn't advocate everybody think this way. Cause I don't know. How yeah. But work, who but... gives a shit because they're all retards, right? Like that's, that that's that, uh, that from the really the negative way. Yeah. Well. If you want to go the super egotistical narcissistic route. Yeah. Well, no, no, it's objectively true within your model. Like it doesn't matter if these people get it or not. Right. Unless it, unless it somehow affects I mean, your I wish personal that happiness. More people would think that way because then I could communicate things to other people that would improve my experience more. But wait, can you, can you rephrase that? So like, I think that most people are really dumb and irrational. It makes it really hard for, to get across like certain ideas. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then it ultimately damages my experience at the end. So maybe if more people thought like me, it would be easier to communicate those ideas. Well, that that reasoning is not good enough for you to advocate your position, though. You said like you don't think that most people should think the way you do. Well, I I don't know. Um, I don't know if I meant that or if I mean that. I don't know if most people are capable of thinking the way that I do because I think that most people are more emotionally wired than I am. Yeah. Sorry, it's, maybe I misspoke or you. I assigned a different weight to that word than I intended to. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Because I think that most people do feel like an intrinsic draw to certain things. Like most people would look at like a puppy or a kitten and say, oh no, like this thing ought to be protected just based on how adorable it is. And I think that puppies and animals and people all have like intrinsic rights that need to be respected. And these are things that are, you know, we we have moral imperatives to act, you know, in, in responsibilities to these things, you know. But that's like that, only relevant, but in, the, in your case, it's only relevant to your own personal like experience. Interest, yeah, animal. I don't believe that any yeah. of those things intrinsically exist at all. Yeah, but like, so like, what I'm saying is like, you put value on Aslan because like, he enriches your personal life in some way, right? But yeah. not not because he's a cat, furry animal that exists somewhere. Correct. Like, I don't yeah. give a fuck about any of that. Yeah. So so the the that animal is not important to you outside of um, your own experience of it. So like all the all the stray cats in Los Angeles or something. There's tons of them. Um, like don't matter unless it affects your own personal happiness stuff like that right um correct yeah i wouldn't give a fuck really okay hmm. can i steal the no i'm gonna get demoted this game my garen was disconnected for literally 15 minutes <laughs> <laughs> uh what what league are you in <laughs> i was in diamond four but i'm going to diamond five after this oh baby <laughs> Is this where your heart stuck? Um, or are you I don't still know. I, well, I was I was in my promos to D three earlier today. I was super excited, and then I got some fucking shitter masters player that his champ got banned, and he literally fed the fuck out of my game. And then I played <laughs> against him in the next game, and his main champ wasn't banned, so then he shit on my team. I don't know why the fuck <laughs> some master shitter is all the way in fucking diamond four MMR, but yeah. boosted D. Well, maybe not because he actually was able to play it. You said in the second game. Well, yeah, I think it's just like a super hard one trick, and I don't think he dodges if he doesn't get his champ. That's really bad. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty obnoxious. So that was like my whole promo is like super fuck. You only is it still that you only lose you lose one and you're just done? As far as Wait, promotions what? go? Oh no, it's you have two games. You play best of three. Okay, so you, uh and then for the actual promotion to the next league you play best of five, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man.
Yeah, it's rough out there in League of Legends, buddy. But it sounds like this is what you're going to be playing for a while because if you're Until done the next with... season in Path of Exile, yep, yeah. If you're done with Path, then I don't think I'm going to be able to convince you to get on the Realm Real Albums. And to be honest, I don't know if you should. No, I mean, I, I, I'll probably play more. If you ever want to play, just message me and I'll probably do it, especially now that I'm doing this shit. All right. I'll take you up on that. Well, thank you for... Um, I think you changed a lot of my thinking and I I took a lot of notes, so I kind of have to like <laughs> um, sit back and really think about it. You know, like there's like a whole process of... Yeah, that's good because yeah. you're confronted with ideas you haven't considered before. And if oh, you like sure. think if you think about them enough and then you come back and you bring objections to me, there's a chance that you'll give me objections that I haven't considered before. Mm -hmm. And then that'll let me develop my right thoughts more. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. I, I know I realize it was kind of one-sided, so I appreciate your the patience. Yeah, but... no, it's fine. I enjoy the conversation. It helps me iron out my thoughts more anyway. So Yeah, I, I, right, I also... The, um, the only thing that mm -hmm. I think um, I could provide value on is the sort of like rational thought versus emotional argument, sure. which is kind of interesting. But I'll do some more thinking on this and um i think i'll probably change a lot of stuff pretty drastically as a result of it like uh oh, shit. over the next couple in a good way um i'm okay. not going to become like a um well i i, I think ultimately if i ch achieve happiness through um my own like self-found purposes and i don't attribute mm -hmm. it to like uh spells and like uh witches yeah i and think that's a things, really it, it'll probably thing. put me in a better place do you know a decent bit about like biology or whatever? No, I honestly don't. I wish I did. If you ever get like really bored, like go through Wikipedia and just read about our immune system. That was one of the biggest things for me that gave me like a huge appreciation of the human body without any type of type of mysticism or spooky shit involved. Like our immune system is such an incredibly complicated, fascinating system. It's so fucking cool to look at how it works. I, I don't know if like I don't know if shit like that like ever helps or anything, but don't you need to have like a pretty big um starting knowledge base to kind of like even know no just to like a beginner of... friendly no you can get like a lot of um what the fuck is stunning me um no i don't think so i don't think you need like a huge starting ground to do it huh so you, you think like um i can just like pick up on well i know like the reason i was saying that was because i know that you spent like a lot of time listening to actual biology lectures right like university level lectures yeah that was for other shit though <laughs> oh okay. Oh god. <laughs> this was like way this like when I was in like high school. Just like learning about like the human immune system and everything was like a really fun experience for me. Huh. Um it was like one of the like most fascinating systems or it is like one of the most fascinating systems of the of the human body. Do you feel like you have a pretty good understanding of biology after all the like research and stuff that you did? Um compared to like the average American probably yeah. compared to like the average like um like bachelor student in biology? No, not really. Mhm. Mm but I, like, I know enough to know what I don't know. And I know enough to appreciate what we do have. Yeah, which I guess is like what's important about it. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I like, guess... The whole way of like, of like how we acquire immunity to things and all that is like, oh my God, dude, those systems are so complicated and so intricate and so fucking amazing. Yeah, I, I don't know. Just reading about stuff like that is really interesting. And, and you have an appreciation actually, of those systems by virtue of that fact? Of that complicated... Yeah, you know? actually, this is actually really funny. Um, have you ever heard of something called the Traveling Salesman? A store, a book, or it something like familiar. that. There is a um, I want to say it's a religious book um that my mom made me read when I when I was um a, a kid or whatever. Um, I want to say it was called the Traveling Salesman, but maybe not. But like, I think in this book, I think of um, or maybe it's Death of a Salesman. That might be it. I'm not sure. Hmm. But um, in this book, at some point, I think the guy is like having a crisis of faith. And he um, and he communicates with God, um, or, or or he's like somehow communicating with God, and God ends up writing him like a memorandum on the human body to make him realize how amazing God created us as human beings. And as part of this memorandum, it like detailed like all of the super fascinating aspects of like human physiology. Um, and that reading that kind of had the opposite impact on me, where like I saw like a whole bunch of like really fucking cool, awesome shit that the human body has um, that doesn't really require God to function at all. If that makes sense. It does. And that was at a very young age that you did that? Um, well, it was at a young age that I read it, but it was yeah. at an older age that I kind of reflected on it. And Yeah, I, I think um, I have to think more about, like, so, so I, I don't want to, like, ascribe a model to myself just because I, even if I think it's, like, the most rational model, if it mm -hmm. significantly decreases my personal happiness, it's still not worth it. Does that make sense? For me personally, right? Um, so, so like the, 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 what I just said makes sense first. 
Yeah. Um, I would just be really careful about that because at some point, I think you have to confront the fact that you're like embracing a delusion for your own personal happiness. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, but, but I think like I have to decide if I'm okay with that or not. Does that make uh -huh. sense? Like um, where – so like the, the thinking I have to do going forward is like do I want rational thought to dominate my perspective and then, and what result will that have versus where I'm at now, which is like where I believe that like me meditating every day and, you know, um, shaking sticks at things like makes me happy or whatever it is. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then I have to compare those two models for myself and then come out with an alternative or, or, or with an answer. So there's a, there's a story in Siddhartha Herman S's book. I brought it out twice, but the, the uh, story is um, in the book Siddhartha, mm -hmm. the, both Siddhartha, who is the pre-Buddha, right? That's the person that was before Gautama Buddha, um, and the Buddha exist. They both exist simultaneously, even though they're the same, the same person, and they meet each other. And when the Buddha teaches Siddhartha about Buddhism, Siddhartha says, assuredly, this is the best path that a human being can follow, as philosophically or, or personally or otherwise. But its flaw is that it still isn't my original experience. So, so like what I'm saying is like I have to take the um, kind of like gel of this and, and, and see how it fits for my own personal happiness. Does that make sense? I'm not sure. sure about what the conclusion that I'll reach yet. I have to like go through it's it. It's just that at this point, it feels like you're kind of doing like a post hoc rationalization, which is irrational. Um, yeah, it might, so like, so it might instance, be that you open the let's gate say and that I can't somebody go back, says, but I don't know yet. Yeah, so like, yeah. let's say, well, I'll do extreme examples. Let's say somebody says, like, I really like fucking nine-year-olds, right? That's like their go-to thing that makes them really happy. Mm -hmm. And then you have a long talk with them and you say like, okay, well, this is the reason why doing this is wrong. You blah, 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 blah. And at the end of the day, they say to you like, okay, I'm going to consider all of your ideas. You know, I'm really going to take this into consideration. But like, I don't know if I'm going to adopt another system that's going to hurt my own personal happiness quite a bit. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, if all of your personal happiness or if so much of it is derived from, you know, like fucking nine-year-olds, I don't know if you're ever going to want to change your mind. Okay, you know? but so oh, hang like, on a if, second. If things, you, just, you just did that yeah. thing that I always tell you you fucking do, where you're like, you just compared my system of spirituality to fucking nine-year-olds, and like it's a totally sure. different sphere. Well, no, no. So, I'm, yeah, I mean, like, not... well, the big difference is that in one, you're harming other people actively, and the other, you only have a chance to, I guess. But like, what I'm saying is that like, if the what I'm trying to illustrate is that like, if a person really enjoys doing a certain thing, and then you present them with something, showing them why that thing might not be the best thing to do, and they say, okay, well, I'll consider that, but as long as I don't lose a lot of enjoyment, well, it's like, okay, well, then, I mean, you're probably not going to consider it very much because you're putting your enjoyment before any type of rational thought process. Yeah, but we already so, established that that might be a better model of thinking for some, most humans. And, like, I would I would acknowledge that I might fit into that category. Like, I don't necessarily know that I benefit completely from a rational model of the universe, and that's what I'm trying to debate over the next week or so, probably. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's yeah. possible. But, I mean, like, there are still some hard problems that, like, I'll never have the answer for that are incredibly uncomfortable for me, like things like dying or whatever or or um, degradation of your, you know, body or things that I, I can never be content with. So, I mean... Yeah, I don't yeah. know that spirituality has those answers anymore either. I think it used to. Well, but, of course, because there's yeah. something past that, or there's something greater than being human, or there's some experience. That's that like the true beyond. religious experience. But I'm saying like spirituality, um, sort of new age spirituality to me doesn't account for like afterlife and stuff like that. It doesn't. It doesn't really cover those things. That's sort of the realm of like uh, old religion and stuff like that still. So like, so like, let me give you an objective example, okay? Like, you can do yoga for five years or ten years. And I, I don't think anything about what yoga teaches you or Buddhism teaches you will get you to the point where you believe that there's an afterlife and it solves that death problem for you. Oh, sure. Well, that, isn't, that problem is for still Buddhism, be... doesn't it teach you that like it's your desire for life that you need to let go of? Isn't that the, like the central tenet of Buddhism? Your desire for things or your desire for Desire for suffering, yeah. The, uh, the, sure. the, the suffering in and of itself is something you need to let go of. But I'm saying like the practice of that takes a lifetime, multiple, multiple lifetimes in most Buddhist, uh, in most Buddhist thought forms. So like the, the likelihood that you're going to hit that to actually reduce your suffering in this life, life is really, mm -hmm. really slim. So what I'm saying is like I don't know that spirituality actually provides an adequate model to solve that problem. Like it certainly wasn't. So me being like a heavily spiritual person, having read the Bible four times, the Bhagavad Gita, the Rig Veda, like the, the the Quran, everything definitely didn't solve the death problem for me. I'm still like right there with you on that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's my lack of like a personal enlightenment or whatever. But like it, like I didn't find that answer in religion. Sure. Yeah. So so I don't I don't know if um there's a solution there. Do you feel like DMT or LSD or anything like that provides experiences that are worthwhile having outside of psilocybin or no? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think, but, but different, different ones. Um, 
peyote for sure uh is mm-hmm. an experience that's like completely different from Soul Seaborn and um LSD can be that as well. I think you get a pretty different experience from LSD or synthetic drugs as you mm-hmm. would from... When I say... I'm sorry, let me be very clear. When I yeah. say like a different experience, I don't care about the artsy shit at all. I have zero... I just, I'm just more curious about so the So that being visuals, experience. yeah. Yeah, um, so I don't care about cool hallucination visuals or like when you draw, it's super cool. I mean like the like the things like the crazy dose of, of psilocybin got me, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, peyote would do it for sure. Visuals totally aside, you'd be in a, okay. you'd be in a very different place. Um, ayahuasca maybe, which is sort of a DMC, DMT, DMT substrate. Um, I, I think like for you personally, you would need to do something like really heavy, like you'd have to do a really heavy hallucinogen, like a pretty large dose of LSD or peyote. And I think you'd have a different experience. But other than mm-hmm. that, I don't think the other ones are worth it. Um, and then once you do those once, you're probably done. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm done with the psilocybin after once. <laughs> yeah, you've you've taken that as far as you need to go with it. For sure, for sure. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's Is a, peyote um, something you smoke or can you consume that? What? Peyote. Yeah, peyote you smoke or you eat. Um, I ate it. So but but and that's I think the most authentic way to do it. Gotcha. Yeah, you can you can eat it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really crazy that just like eating a little plant like that can have such an impact on your psyche. That's a pretty mind blowing. It's amazing and the experience is so much more um like just how do I even intense than than even yeah. where you were at like with Sil Seaborn yeah like um it really if... bothers me that like before I did that I could have never no one could have explained that to me and I couldn't have gotten it anywhere else I couldn't have read anything I couldn't have watched a movie there's just and there's you you can't right you know uh, yeah of course you know right you just yeah. can't you can't yeah no you can't like <laughs> so it, why do you so say does it, why, why do you say that it bothers you that you can't uh that, that you can't like you couldn't get that well, from because Five years ago, I was of the mindset that I should be able to understand everything on an intellectual level. Because in terms of like socializing with other people, right? Like I have a fundamental lack of care, genuine care for other people, but I'm yeah. really good at faking it in terms of conversations. Like I can be interested in other people. Um, remember when Rekfin was talking to you and he said the same thing, like asking, oh shit, never mind. This is a different conversation. But like um, a really good way to fake interest in people is asking them a lot of questions about themselves. They feel like you're genuinely interested in them. People love to talk about themselves. They'll yeah. talk about themselves at length, right? The the goal to a conversation where you want the other person to like you is to ask as many questions as you can to unlock their ability to talk at length about themselves, right? Yeah. Um, so I figured that like if I if I was good at like faking those types of social interactions that I could understand most other things by just kind of like reading about it or empathizing with it, you know. But um, as I as I have experience after experience, um, there are experiences that I have that radically reshape things that I previously thought to be true. Um, so like one thing that I cite like a million times before I became more sympathetic to minority experiences was playing um, CS:GO with that girlfriend that I talked about. Do you know? Did I? I've explained this to you, I'm sure, right? Actually, at I don't some think point. you have. Um, I, I used to be, I used to have the gamer bro mindset that like, if you, um, if you're a girl and you play games and people say like dumb jokes at you, it's not a big deal. Like, oh, you just never told me the story actually. Huh. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. I used to be, I used to have like the gamer bro mentality, like if you're black or if you're female and people make like, you know, sandwich jokes at you, just roll with it. It's whatever. Everybody gets harassed online. Like who cares? It's not a big deal. Like it's literally just a one-off comment. How can this be so annoying to you? Um, and then I had a friend that I played a lot of CSGO with her name was, um, Cheeks and I played CSGO with her for two weeks. And on the second day I was done with it. Every really? single fucking game we played. I knew th- it got to the point where it's PTSD. I knew the millisecond that she opened her microphone, every other guy in the game would be like, oh, what the fuck? Oh, are you a girl? Oh, a girl? Like every fucking game. And I was like, Whoa. this is the most obnoxious fucking thing I've ever dealt with in my entire life. Like I'm already fucking sick of this. And um, after I had that experience, I was like, holy shit. Like I have such a radically different, um, I have such a radically different idea of this now. Um, I need to be a lot more careful with how I empathize with other people because I don't know how many other things I think about in ways that I shouldn't. If does that make sense? Yep, makes per- it, it, it's not what you said doesn't make sense, but I know exactly huh? what you're saying. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I, like, I just get worried yeah. now that I might have a particular thought on something, but the only reason I have it is just because I don't have the shared experience that would give me like a better actual context on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I so I'm really careful now when I consider the and and I think that as a result of having that one experience now I do think I there are some things I can try to understand without having to experience them directly. Um, but because I'm because I'm like extra careful now to like really listen to people that have those experiences, you know. Um, but but still, like I, I think that experience is like the ultimate 
teacher. So um, yeah. So for things like psilocybin, I guess took, I, I, it took a long time to get there, but like basically, um, um, I, that's like an experience that I never could have had had I not done. You yeah, know, a, you couldn't have had that context on that yeah. thing unless you'd actually experienced it. I think for for yeah. peyote and LSD are probably the same way. Sure. Um, but then there's a huge amount of hallucinogens like surrounding those that like are probably mm -hmm. not worthwhile after you've done all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I hear mm -hmm. a lot of stuff about like LSD. Like people talk about doing art and drawing and shit on it. Although for the first three and a half grams of um of uh psilocybin, I feel like I probably would have thought the exact same. Sure. Um because yeah. it wasn't until the other two bags kicked in that <laughs> shit no, you got went fucking into, real. <laughs> you went into ego death. Like that's like a really yeah, yeah really but like different that thing. whole experience was like but now but now that I've gone through that experience like before, if I would hear people talk about like, oh, dude, I do shrooms and it's like a spiritual experience, I would just immediately assume this person is fucking retarded. Like, okay, like, yeah, dude, like I smoke weed. Like, wow, it's so spiritual. But now <laughs> having experienced shrooms as much as you can, like, I, if somebody says that, like, I am way more sympathetic to that point of view now. Like, dude, like, if you've really done a lot of that shit, that's some crazy fucking shit. And unless you are like incredibly figured out inside, like, I could totally understand how anybody could have that interpretation that they've gone through like some spiritual shit. I'm way more sympathetic to that point of view now. Oh, that's cool. Do, do you think that people do you agree that people can sort of sort themselves out through psychedelics now that you've had that personal experience of them so for my what my personal experience was and what i've heard other people say is that psychedelics um expose yourself to your own weaknesses whether or not you fix them during your trip i don't know what that's like for every person i don't know i think because you've had a really bad trip and not a good one I think that like mine was bad, but at the end it was good because I figured out what I wanted to figure out. I think mm. I got this across. Or did you listen to my long on the drive yeah, home or whatever? Yeah, I listened to the whole thing. Oh, no, I listened to the 30 minute like summary that you had. When... Oh, with Recful at the restaurant? Yeah. Oh shit, that wasn't the full one. I'm ready to post the full one. I just need to do, I'm actually putting a thing at the beginning of the video, like a little warning. Um, <laughs> What's the, is it like, don't do this at home type of thing? Yeah, basically yeah. I have like, it's actually really cute. I've got like a sponsor for like some mental health shit and I'm going to incorporate that into oh, the that's warning so, message of the video. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, because I'm worried that like a lot of people are going to try it and like I genuinely don't know how it would impact somebody. Um, oh no, but I had like a much longer um, description of everything that happened on my drive home. It was probably like a two hour video where I, where I went through every single part of the, the trip. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, basically like the, the big part of, of my trip, I think was like figuring out like why I'm there. Um, I think, uh, I don't remember if I was getting these words across to you when I explained it to Recful or to you, but like I had like two super transcendental moments in my trip that were like, these were like the moments that I was there for, um, where like the entire universe stood still and it was me and like one other person. The first time it was um, Becca, Reckful's girlfriend. I don't know why, but she became like my spirit guide on this shit. Yeah. Um, but the second was talking to myself in, in a mirror um, to figure out like why had I decided that I was there and what did I want to get out of going there? And like that conversation with myself, that those two things were like the super highly transcendental moments for me. And that I feel like I figured the most out during those two moments, if that makes sense. When you say transcendental, what does that, what does that mean to you? When I say transcendental, it's that, oh fuck, this is so hard to explain, but like the feeling of the feeling of observing yourself third hand is very uncomfortable and very strange, yeah. right? Like all that shit. Um, but these were moments where it felt like I was very loose. I hate saying this because now you're gonna think about the spirituality shit again. But I felt like I was I had achieved. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm past. You've you've beaten me on that. I'm, I'm okay, I'm, okay. I'm past it. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I had achieved like extreme lucidity in another dimension. So uh -huh. like I was there with one other person having a very lucid conversation, talking about exactly what I wanted to talk about. Um, the first time I did it, it was when I was talking to Becca and she was asking me like, are you happy you're doing this? She wasn't actually saying this. It was all my fucking head, right? But she was asking me like, are you happy you're doing this? Um, are you happy that you came here? Like, you know, you understand that you have to figure this out for yourself. Like nobody can help you in this area or whatever, right? That was that conversation. And it felt like I was having like a one-on-one -on -one conversation, a totally lucid one-on-one -on -one conversation with another entity i guess you would say mm -hmm. and then the second moment was when i walked to the bathroom and i talked to like a version of myself that i think represented my subconscious like in the mirror that was like the second moment where i felt like i was having a truly like undescribable experience where i'm like having a conversation like with something like in a totally lucid way but obviously it was all happening in my fucking head does that make sense so like when you describe you said like these are the two experiences i got the most out of what yeah, these exactly were like, the, mean? like the, what like, I mean was like, these were like the, 
this is so bullshit and I'm not allowed to say this because I don't know because I haven't tripped multiple times, but it felt like these were like the levels that doing so many shrooms had pushed me through. I felt like I had like three or maybe four levels to my tripping stuff. So like, and, and I try to mark these based on like when they occurred, but I could be wrong because I haven't done it multiple times. So maybe I would have gone through all of these with just one bag. But like, I, so you, you're aware that I did like, I did three and a half, mil, um, three and a half grams. And then about an hour later, I did the next two bags, right? I did seven grams. Yeah. After. So there was a pretty big period between when the first one hit and the second one hit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she had level six before us and another gank. So, um, the, the, I think that the first bag started to kick in like way before the other bags. Uh -huh. And um, I think that when that happened, I had like the artsy experience. So like colors were blossoming behind me. Like when a color would appear on the TV, like a color would appear on the wall and like everything around me was becoming enveloped in colors and shit. And the images on the screen became, like came out of this. Like it was a crazy trippy, like artsy experience, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, when I started to have this, I got really afraid because, um, I thought that that's all it was going to be. And that was not what I wanted. I was totally bored out of my mind. I mean, like, it was cool to see how your mind could play tricks on you in terms of believing that shit. Like that was really interesting, but it, but wasn't, it wasn't like what you came there it for. It definitely yeah. wasn't yeah. what I was there for. Are you fucking kidding me? Um, can I get a clip of that? There's no way that fucking cue hit me. Was I slowed? I must have been slowed by Jinx's W or some shit. I don't even know. But um, yeah, I wasn't concerned at all with that. Then the second part was like going through like the big loops of death, like over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, being stuck in like the death loops, being stuck in the in the loops of like being cognizant, wanting to know why I'm cognizant, being cognizant that I'm in a loop and then losing that and then coming back again and then wondering how many millions of times I'd been in that loop. Um, and then like the um, and then the two um, the the two things. Um, fuck. Hold on, sorry. No, it's fine. Yeah, I totally get it. It's fucking retard. Um, the two things that um, and then the two like greater tier moments. Like if if I could have like my whole trip being this, I like, guess like the redeeming parts of the trip were like the two like because everything else was like very out of body, very kind of like I guess I would describe it as like ego deathy, um, very um, disconnected from having any sort of like being my own person. Like just instead being like a, a passerby entity that's just kind of like passively observing what's happening. Um, the, uh, the, 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 like, um, the next level of that was like these transcendental moments where I was like having these lucid one-on-one -on -one conversations with these entities that were a part of my mind. Yeah. The, the, those were the things that were like, and, and those moments were so incredibly brief for me that those were the moments that I would like to think that like doing the dose that I did got me to those moments that I'm not sure if I would have had those moments had I not gone as far as I did, if that makes sense, I guess. It does. But I could be wrong. Yeah. Maybe I would have otherwise. Maybe I would have on just seven grams. I'm not sure. Huh. Or three and a half even. I don't know. Have you, did you, did you, do you have those? Can you, do you feel like you had that at all on psilocybin or peyote or is that what I'm describing unique there? Yeah. So peyote in particular. Um, so I don't, so let me say, I don't want to make any claims about what I believe or like, cause fuck, I feel like I'm in this weird meme now where like people um, think I'm like this super weird, like otherworldly dude or, or things sure. like you, like where they just think that I'm like, just like a bullshit, like, um, you know, like, uh, think that like, think that, like elves are real and shit. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so, so like, I want to, I want to qualify this where I'm saying that, like, these are ne not necessarily reflective of my personal beliefs, but, um, on peyote, it, it, it sure as fuck seemed like I was talking to entities outside of myself. Um, sure. things that existed in a totally different dimension, different time and different, um, consciousness than me. So, 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 um, to clarify your experience, are you saying that every experience that you had, um, individually was with y you yourself? So like yeah, when well, you like, talked in, when you talk to yourself in the mirror, you talk to, to, to uh, another part of yourself. Yes. Okay. Correct. So I, I have had that experience where I, I'm talking to, um, kind of like other, uh, so I had a really, um, profound experience on mushrooms once where I was talking to what Jung would call my anima, my feminine self. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but that was extremely different from the peyote feeling of talking to like, at, at least where my, again, I don't want to assert any belief to this, but where my mind was at the time, um, sure as hell felt like I was talking to like, uh, uh, a deva or like, a um, another being 
right? Like a, sure. an actual other thing that had its own complete thought process. It had it, it had everything else going for it. It wasn't a part of me at all. Okay, and, sure. and you didn't have that experience, right? Um, I mean, I had experiences where I was talking to not me at all, but they, they they were like embodied in other people, if that makes sense. Like, did I tell you about the gaslighting stuff or no? No, I don't think so. Ah, oh, fuck. So like, um, fuck, oh, I you did. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. It was oh, when yeah. everybody where, was like, trying I to make your trip. Voices. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, they, yeah. But they weren't really saying that. I, you understand that, right? No, I, I don't. So what I don't understand about your explanation is what, how much of it they were. Oh shit! Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So they weren't yeah. saying anything of this. It was all in my head. That like I heard the girl saying things like, um, like she would say things that would pop into my conscious half a millisecond later, and she would be saying things like, "Oh my gosh!" Like he thinks that like I'm an actual person speaking these words. Like he actually thinks that this is um, you know, that he actually thinks that this isn't happening in his head. Stuff like that. That um. But, but, the, but they the weren't like actually, were actually saying... in the room. We're not fucking with you at all. No, 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 no. They didn't Definitely say anything not. like that. No, no, no. This was all one hundred percent in my head. And, and you know this because they they told you bef afterwards. Yeah, of course. Okay, yeah. Mm. Yeah, but and then why would they do that? That's like super mean. <laughs> what the fuck? No, because oh, like and, no, and no. A lot of people do do that. And like when you're when they're like if they're sober and their friends tripping, they'll fuck with them. Like that happens all the time. Oh, no, no. Hold on. Uh, let me meet for like two seconds. Yeah, yeah, of course. It was um the people that I was with were, um you, you uh, I know you don't have the best impression, but like Becca and Chris, or I'm sorry, like, like, um, no, I really like Chris. Like Chris. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like those people. Chris yeah. and, and then his wife, right? Yeah, she yeah. would, you know, they would never do that. Right. I don't think so, but I think Reckful no. would. I think Reckful would Re fuck with you. Reckful wasn't fucking with me intentionally. He just really wanted to know what was going on. So ended up like unintentionally fucking with me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I'm just not meeting. I just okay, don't want to okay. name their names because yeah, I don't know yeah, if they're like being a thing. Yeah. All right. I'm back. Yeah. But like all of that, all of that shit was 100% happening in my head. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right, that makes that, that makes more sense. I see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so you did, but you didn't have the experience of talking to like uh, um like just a uh, like a, a being green that was elf like totally... walks in and he's like, hey. My name is no, nothing like that. Oh, no, 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 yeah, like that, that no. stuff happens on peyote. <laughs> like you have a like you have an actual like separate uh, like uh, in my case it was a it was a cactus man mm -hmm. uh, with a with a like a like a, a hat like a, a like a, um like a not like a cowboy hat like a like a Hispanic hat but not like sure. a not like um not like a what, what do you call the giant Hispanic hat not like one of those a sombrero yeah sombrero it wasn't like one of those. Um, and it was, it was a, it was a, uh, giant green cactus. And like that dude was as real as like you or I to me at the time. <laughs> like, okay. and, uh, I still can't make sense of that. Weird. Yeah. And that's never happened to me on mushrooms though. I've never had like a separate entity come in and be like, Hey, what's going on? And like, just talk yeah. to me. Like it's, and, and the thing is like, I know that I'm fucked up, but it is fine. So it's it, its mindset is like talking to me like it's sober. It's not fucked up. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe. I mean, as much as it can. I mean, like I said, I've never had that particular experience, but I mean, like, I kind of understand what you're saying, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's not well very well explained. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, like, and that's that's kind of another sort of mind fuck is like when stuff starts showing up that isn't in, uh isn't at all connected to you mm -hmm. and, and, and sort of has its own relevance in the universe you think at the time the, then shit gets pretty crazy yeah for sure yeah that was um I, I don't remember if i expressed that to you or not that was a really important part of my trip was getting other people to talk to themselves i kept getting this um impression that i was like the star of some weird like truman-esque like show and it would really bother me when i was like getting really down on my trip when other people would start looking at me because when everybody started to look at me, it felt like my subconscious was like playing tricks on me and shit. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think you'd have a pretty different experience of um I, I think you'd have a pretty different experience of parody. I think it would be worth your time. But probably not for a while. You should probably chill. Why? Fuck it, I'm ready, dude. I think I, I don't know. I think you should probably chill. 
you've been through. I'm done, dude. I'm then good. Again, I'm done yeah, now. I didn't seem to fucking do anything to you. I'm ready all. to go, man. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's gonna be if that's some more shit. As long as I don't die, okay? Did I tell there were like seven things that I said like a million times. One of them was like, don't let me die, don't let me die. Every time I came back to like my semi lucid state. <laughs> the thing of peyote is like you're not even um it's like you're on like a like a different you're not even you. You're not even there, but you experienced that to some extent, right? Like you, yeah, not being myself, being a disconnect. Any, yeah, but it was horrible because that idea is like very uncomfortable to me. I think I told, I don't remember I told you, like the worst part was coming back over and over again and not knowing if when I came back, because every time I came back, I knew that what I came back to felt slightly wrong, but it was this worry that that was reality from now on. That was one of the yeah, scariest moments. That's, there were like that's so, the most th terrifying thing about hallucinations. Yeah, I hate it because there were like yeah. seven different moments that were the most terrifying moments to me. But like, that was a huge <laughs> one. The idea that I, I would come back over and over again, but it totally wasn't reality. And I knew that it was fake. But then like, I heard the voices of the people around me. They weren't really saying this, but in my head, they were like, are you happy? Here you go now. This is what reality really is. Now you've opened your, your eyes. I hope you're happy that this is what you have to live with now. And it was the worst feeling ever. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, like, and that was... Uh, something that the way that you can tell uh, at least for me one of the big tells that someone has done had one of these trips is uh, -huh. uh something you said really specifically where you were like i will if i had a gun i would absolutely have killed myself oh not yeah without yeah. even a question and, and there's like I and i'm i i understand exactly what you're fucking talking about because i know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about yeah like oh man dude like if i on my worst mushroom trips if I had a gun, I w it's just, that's easy. Yeah. yeah. Well, not even without a second thought. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. And this is why a lot of people should not do this. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, because the mm -hmm. idea is like, cause you're already like a dead disconnected entity ever. And now you're experiencing what death is. And whenever you thought you were as a distant memory, and you think none it's of it never going to matters. Yeah. And, you yeah. and you're, and you're mm -hmm. stuck here for eternities anyway. So why the fuck wouldn't you just end it all? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a terrifying thing. Um, Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really good that you're putting on your video. Like, Hey, like this might, this might not Fuck be you up forever yeah because yeah. i don't want a lot of people to come away from it thinking that like oh wow this looks, sounds like so much fun like i'm gonna do it. like i don't know what would happen if you weren't like all put together if you tried shit like i think this. it could well you actually would, uh... there's there's actually some science on that right there are like people that have can it can trigger schizophrenic episodes to go to do hallucinogens yeah, right? yeah. Or, or people talk about like permanent personality changes or like i've heard other people i don't know how true this but i've heard other people say like oh yeah my friend did this and now he has this eerie feeling that he's never like nothing is reality anymore and he can't ever like dissuade himself from feeling that thing yeah i've I, it's hard for me to pinpoint any kind of like anecdotal experiences about that and i've been around a lot of these people um mm -hmm. I, I i've had that happen to people for sometimes like years at a time but they always seem to bounce back at, at some point <laughs> yeah but years mm -hmm. at a time that's a long ass time fuck, well, i'm not yeah. talking about i'm not talking about years at a time like they're in that totally different altered state of reality i'm talking about like years where like stuff is like slightly off of perception but i understand like even that is like a crazy thing yeah, even yeah. being like that off perception is incredibly scary to me. Particularly with like the stuff that, um, so being conscious of like my own like weakness in my belief system here is like, um, I I tend to like so so spirituality has that Jesus aspect right where you can like you can reach out your hand and be like look like if you meditate every day like and if you um if you read the like like Buddhism and you understand it and like you do all these things like you're going to be happy right and like um uh -huh. it has that like sort of like tantalizing sort of thing I want yeah. I always try to be really careful who decisions because it, it can fall into that category where it's like I do I do not advocate that yeah. even most people should do hallucinogens. I, I, th yeah. I, th I think it could really mess you up if you're not in like the right mindset. And then if you are going to do hallucinogens, for God's sake, don't do them like fucking Steven did. Where like you're in, where, where you literally set yourself up to be in the worst period, circumstance period that you possibly could imagine. Like, fuck dude. When you told me that I was, I, w I can't believe that you walked out of that with <laughs> all your ducks in a row. Jesus. It's. I don't know how many uh, people walk back from 10.5 grams of mushrooms. It was a fun experience, my dude. Fun is one way to describe <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a crazy thing. Oh man. <sighs> yeah. So I try to be really careful with that because, like, um. That's not something that I would I would easily recommend people. Mm -hmm. Wow.
Well, maybe we'll do the maybe we'll do the peyote memes in Tahoe. Yeah, maybe. You're on like a pretty bad losing streak, huh? <laughs> yeah, you just have these days. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> oh man. Well, all right. I'm going to get to my dinner, I think, my dude, because I haven't eaten yet today. Are you in your three-hour window? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm also, but I'm I'm not like, oh, it's weird how that works, because I'm like, I know I couldn't eat, but I'd mess it up for tomorrow. You know what I mean? Sure. So, like, I'll have a pretty late dinner, because, like, from here, it's actually going to take an hour, because I got to make a sweet potato, which takes freaking forever, and I'm going to cook up some steaks and some uh, salad. Maybe I'll make a pizza too, because why not? Damn. Yeah, dude, I go hard. And in the meantime, um, I'll rethink my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, thanks for talking to me. I hope your games um get better. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Start they will be tomorrow. That way, a new day. Yep. And uh, I will um, probably message you for Realm Royale in the next couple of days if you're down for it. Yeah, I'll just be playing League all the time, so I welcome the break. So just let me know whenever you want to. Okay. I will. We'll try it out and uh, do some duos or something. I'll message you tomorrow about it. All right, chilling. Cool, man. Thanks, dude. Right. Um, yep. Yeah, I'd really like to talk. Yeah. I'll see you later, buddy. Be careful. All right. Later.